Test, test. Scat. Skibbity. <laughs> yeah, that feel. Woo! Woohoo. Oh, a, a light woohoo. He's, like, he's lucky. Uh, That's your woohoo. Woohoo. They almost blew the speakers. Vipiria. 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 Everybody and welcome back to Fifth Period, the film podcast hosted by two media teachers. Where today I am donning my fedora and metaphorically cracking my whip because I am so so pumped to be talking about one of my absolute favorites and one of your absolute favorites too. One hundred percent of this. My name is Mr. Brown, and with me, as always, is Mr. Boylan. And yeah, I'm I'm bust. You buzz. Um, but you geared up. I'm, um, I'm, I'm geared up. The... And return to video too. I know it's been a while. We've, uh, we said we were going to wait for some uh, feedback to get the video happening, but basically we felt like we couldn't cover this film without putting a little bit of extra sauce on it. As you can see, a lovely, a little extra more. mustard on top. Yep, we got some uh, a fair amount of fortune and glory right in front of us. And, uh, yeah, we're really hyped to talk about this movie. Um, again, yeah, one of my favorite movies of all time. So Yeah, so I messaged you yesterday. I said, should we do it? Should we do a video? And you said, oh, I don't know. Do, do we have any props that would make it worth it? <laughs> <laughs> do I have any Checks props? Checks messenger, six images sent. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yeah, all right, cool. I was, I, I was very tempted. I've got two uh, Raiders-specific Lego sets as well, but... Mm. Would have been a little hard to bring in, so uh, I'll, I'll include a couple of pictures along the way so that you can see those. But it's the uh, it's the opening boulder roll, yep, and the uh, the snake temple at the end, the the well of souls. The well of souls. So yeah, I'm I'm, I'm pretty pumped. I'm geared up. Yep. Let's jump in. We have been wanting to do this for a while, as we said, but we've had a bit of a roadblock that it was M, but because we watch our films for Film Club on ClickView. We jumped on to ClickView and realized that the version that had been uploaded there was actually only PG. And I figured out why it's only PG, because that's the version I watched to prepare for today. So it's about 10 minutes shorter than the traditional runtime of oh, okay. Raiders. Yep. And it cuts out all of the more gory graphic type scenes. Um, but it's pretty funny how it does that along the way. And I will absolutely make mention of it okay. because I know this film like the back of my hand. So anytime something was skipped over, I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. What, what's up in there? Pause, jump onto old YouTube, watch the proper scene and then jump back like, into oh, it. like, that's what happened. Exactly right. In addition to chatting Raiders of the Lost Ark today, we will also be doing a bit of a brief stop off for weekly watches. Just a little, just a little check in. Just a check in. Yeah. But we will also be then returning to the Indiana Jones franchise to do our uh, rival rankings and, and see how they stack up. Yes, uh, it'll be interesting to see, I guess, how it compares to a similar Lucasfilm property and to see how divisive it gets. Oh, it'll, it'll get divisive. <laughs> so if you want to skip ahead to any of that, guys, I will leave time codes in the description below. Hi, my name's Zachary, and we're talking about Raiders of the Lost Ark. Big, big thank you to Zachary for his intro to the pod today. Now, I was absent on Friday, so you had to get the recording from Zach, but I did, I did teach him last year, yeah. and he's quite the skilled editor. Okay. So he made a Mentos commercial, one of the tasks that we do for Year 8 Media, you're very familiar with. He made his Mentos commercial, but he made it look like the 90s style Mentos commercials cool. by doing that, um, the displacement with the red, green, and blue blur yep. between it. And um, yeah, it was awesome. He put it into the four by three ratio, so oh, it wow. seemed like it was from the 90s. And then he also incorporated uh, fire effects over the top because something burnt down in the advertisement and puppetry because he didn't Damn. want to feature on the video. So 
yeah, it was pretty cool. Like I love that task in general, but it's always really nice to see something different. Yeah. Um, and it was definitely a first for me seeing puppets being used. That's in it. fantastic. So, Super yeah. creative. Yeah, I, I spoke to him and he said, oh, you're doing media this year. Um, he isn't doing media because I don't think he unfortunately got a spot. Uh, so just missed it's out. It's cutthroat. It is cutthroat, but uh, hopefully gets another opportunity to do uh, media again. Yeah, particularly, you know, the fantastic work like he was doing last year. Uh, we need more of that uh, in the media classroom. So, uh, yeah, um, I, I sort of, I didn't really go and target anyone, I guess, for an intro. I just put it out there in the ether and say, hey, if you haven't done one before, have a think about it during the watching of the film today mm. and see if you want to come up. And Zachary uh, was you know, one of the first ones to come up and uh, and have a chat with me. So it was good to meet him. Uh, and, yeah, fantastic to hear about his exploits in media. Yeah, nice. Thank you heaps, Zach. All righty, let us jump in to Raiders of the Lost Ark. Not Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. A common misconception. Just Raiders of the Lost Ark. So all sequels were Indiana Jones and And the whatever it might be. Um, The Muffin of Mystery. And the Muffin of Mystery. That was the unofficial sequel to Raiders. Yeah, that's never but my favourite. You'll you'll see it in my ranking later on. <laughs> I said the MacGuffin. Oh, well, <laughs> <laughs> completely missed it. And I was like, the muffin. I thought you said muffin. <laughs> it's you, McMuffin. <laughs> good callback. Good, good callback. It's a great reference. Uh, but for this first one, it is just Raiders of the Lost Ark. So yep. what a team. You got Spielberg, yeah. you got George Lucas, you got John Williams, you got Harrison Ford. You got Lawrence Kasdan. All coming at... Who's a Lawrence Kasdan? He's one of the guys working on the script. We got him too. <laughs> old, old oh, Loza. 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 Lozzy Kaz. Lozzy Kaz, that's, As... what, that's what we call him. Yeah, yes. all the time. He has a special place in my heart in particular. I definitely knew who he was. <laughs> So, one thing I want to talk about, though, apparently Spielberg was not going to be the studio's first choice as a director. So, George no. Lucas wrote the script um, with old, old Loza, and um, he was determined to get Spielberg on to direct, but Spielberg had developed a little bit of a reputation for going over budget with his last couple of films. And the money that they were pulling in didn't quite make up for the fact that he had drastically gone over budget. So, um, yeah, George Lucas had to put his foot down and say, nope, I definitely want to work with him. It's him or nobody. They agreed, reluctantly agreed. And then Spielberg, knowing that he had been developing that reputation, Mm -hmm. then was a little more frugal than he had previously been. He did a lot of model work to set things up in advance just to make sure that everything was going to run smoothly on the day so that he could not be wasting anyone's time and then save a little bit of money that way. And they actually did come in under budget and then obviously performed incredibly well. So there was no more doubting Spielberg after the release of Raiders. No, it's um, it was a pretty landmark sort of event when it, but it did come out. It spawned this uh, amazing franchise that we know and love today. Definitely a special one to cover. Now, we kick things off with the fade from the Paramount logo into the mountain. Which would become a bit of a, a trope. It does become a trope of the, the indie franchise. Some films do it better than others. I mean, I don't want to make a mountain out of a molehill or anything here, but... That's uh, okay, Kingdom Crystal Cell did, so that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. Um, they did it for you. But I, I'm a really big fan of creative transitions. I love doing that when I make short films myself. And so something as simple as this in the opening is just... It's an awesome way to kick things off. And I found it really interesting that Spielberg was determined to do this and actually sent someone out to just find a mountain in Hawaii that resembled the Paramount logo. Amazing. Um, And to make the transition even smoother, Mm. he went with a dated uh, 1940s Paramount logo as opposed to the one from the 80s so that it kind of blended a little more. The mountains looked a little more similar. Okay, cool. Yeah, but I I found that a a really interesting tidbit. Like This is something our discussion today is going to be littered with behind-the-scenes details and things like that. Um, And, I mean... We were talking earlier, this box set here came with its own bonus feature disc that stacked. I, I have watched time and time again, but it's cool to still have details about the film that I've only just learned 
recently as well. Yeah, just doing a bit of research and it's like, oh, didn't know that. Yeah. It's good to know. I I thought I knew everything about this film and it's like, huh. Apparently not. You can still surprise me, old Spielberg. Old Old, old Spielberg. Spielberg. (laughs) Never forget the great Spielberg of semester one, 2024. That's it. Um, So we kick things (laughs) off in South America in 1936 and the opening is just incredible. Like even before they go into the temple, wandering through the forest and concealing Indy's identity yep. at first. So lots of silhouettes, uh, he's backlit, lots of shots of feet, anything they can do to conceal his face until he does something rad and then he gets his big entrance. So um, yeah, they're traveling with a couple of guides, but the guides, most of the group gets scared off. So it's just Indy and then uh, two left. Um, so we've got Doc Alfred, Ock himself, Alfred Molina. Alfred Molina. A very early, I'm not sure if he's his first cinematic role, but um, definitely like early days. Oh, Alfred yeah. Alfred Molina is, uh, is a far cry from... Uh, this uh, is his, this that's is his, his Doc Ock audition. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, need to, I need to put that clip in and just put the clanking sound. <laughs> that's pretty good. I like that. Then other guy. Another well. other guy, yeah. I couldn't he, tell you his name. He doesn't become a Marvel villain, so we don't care. No, but uh, <laughs> they've been searching and it looks like they're close enough to making the discovery that other guy gets a little bit greedy He's like, and well, whips out the old pistola. And uh, the, the sound of the gun alerts uh, our unidentified figure. Mm-hmm. And then, well, he goes to the weapon of his own and... <laughs> And it's like, well, this is a bit different. He's someone with a bull whip. That's yeah. like this. It, we're setting up his unique character uh, with some unique, I guess, uh, personality traits and also equipment that he takes along. And then very quickly, this is how the score sort of builds to reveal Indy walking into the light. Yeah, he steps he's out inc- of the shadow and you're incredible. Just like, it is on. So other guy retreats into the forest He's and then uh, Alfred Molina and Indy. What's Alfred Molina's character's name? Alfred Molina. That's Otto yeah. Octavius. I forgot Alfred Molina was playing <laughs> Alfred, Alfred Molina. Molina. <laughs> Fictionalized version of himself, but still. Oh, pretty accurate. Yeah, it's close, isn't it? <laughs> so they go ahead into the temple and this is just my favorite scene from any Indiana Jones film wow. ever. It is just such a rad opening. The thing I love most about it is how little dialogue they include throughout the whole yep. temple run. And yet- The original video game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yet you still completely understand what's going on. You get the dynamics between the characters. You understand that Indy is uh, somewhat fearless. He is intelligent. Yeah. He just. You get so much information with very little dialogue. True. So it starts off and we've got the spiders. This is that element of, oh, he's fearless. He's a brave guy. He doesn't care. Just get those spiders off. I read that they originally put the spiders on them and they just wouldn't move. And so like it didn't look any good on camera because they wanted them to be like crawling all over him. And it was because they were using all male tarantulas. And as soon as they put one female tarantula went in crazy. Them, they went crazy. The pheromones. There you go. Um, but yeah, I, I just love how, because spiders are creepy. You get it. Your fear comes from the second one in the franchise, Temple oh, of Doom. True. And probably less spiders and more the other insects in Temple. Yeah, but centipedes and, and all, the, all the beetles and whatnot. But no, the spiders, there's, there's a heap of tarantulas covering mm. uh, an Indy and then also an Alpha Molina. But uh, Indy's got him and they continue to move on. Yeah. And one thing that's so good about him being established as quite brave early on, it's like, oh, He's, he's perfect. He's going to be good at everything. Nope. And then as soon as something goes wrong, it all kind of turns to shit. And Harrison Ford, this is something that I always praise about Harrison Ford. He, he's kind of like a Bruce Willis in that way where when things go wrong, you see the panic in his face and he's not cool, calm and collected. He's just no. like, as he says later in this film, he's just making it up as he goes along. And so even though he does seem quite suave, there are times where you're like, Oh shit, he doesn't know what he's doing. And yeah, and there's some great moments in this section coming up that really highlights that aspect of his character. And yeah. it makes you, it makes him more endearing. Yeah, it, like he's more relatable. He's not invincible. He can't mm-hmm. do everything. Uh, 
managed he does manage to swing over the little gap i guess in the sort of leading up to the, the main chamber just the slow walk around the corner and again coming into the light and sort of putting his hands on his hips and sort of surveying the whole scene really good shot yeah uh and then yeah Indy starts to work out sort of what the, the traps are in the main mm-hmm. chamber because he can see the idol uh and again like got these really nice sort of like slow zooms um the score here is really, really good. It's quite minimal, but still sort of building a lot of suspense. Uh, and then, yeah, he works out that basically on the pl- if you step on certain platforms, it's going to shoot darts out of the wall. Yep. Um, the way the suspense builds, cutting back between uh, Alfred Molina and Indy, so we're like when he makes like a little bit of a false tink, step, tink, tink, and he's like, like, just be careful. Uh, and then, yeah, as Indy crouches down and looks at the idol and probably one of the... I don't know, I, one of the best shots I've ever seen in a movie. That one right there. Yep. Just like with how the light reflects off the awesome. idol. We've spoken about this before. I was a, I was a bit of a creative kid when I was younger, yeah. a performative kid. Uh, we talked about uh, me reenacting things from Star Wars, pulling lightsabers to me with dressing gowns. You better believe the dressing gown cord was my whip as well. And I could actually (laughs) whip it. I didn't do the the circle one, but I could whip my dressing gown cord. Bam. Um, But this scene was one of the ones that I used to reenact all the time, especially like the touching my face, like weighing up how much it was. Had a little sandbag and some sort of gold thing that I had made. Um, Yeah. And then like putting it down. I was just running through my house. It would have been like. That's good. You know, those big exercise balls. Yeah, I would have been like so, rolling them and running away from that's them. That's so good. It, it's that. so so silly thinking about it now, but I just loved this film so much. And the moment where he's like, "Everything's okay," no, it isn't, and it sinks down. And they're like, "Oh," because yeah, Alfred Miller kind of is like, sort of like, "Oh, relieved, oh, I've done it." Yeah, he's like, "Cool, all right, let's go." And then just the slow kind of turn around is like. Uh oh, and then as you said, just books it with yeah. like the most. And he's like Whoa. panicked, and yeah, it's so good. Like the cool, calm, and collected guy is just gone, and he's he's running. Um, so Alfred Molina tries to screw him over. You throw me the idol, I throw you the whip, and so he does it. Give me the whip. Adios, señor. This is the part. One of my favorite facial expressions from Harrison Ford. He jumps over the chasm. Grabs onto a weed and he's like, oh, thank God, I got it. <laughs> and then it, it releases and he's like, Ooh. he's just Norman Desmond clutching. He does. He Norman there. Desmond's it right <laughs> up. Um, but then goes forward and another thing that has become a very iconic indie moment. Yeah. Rolls himself under a door and then goes back for the whip. So most oh. people would relate it to the to the old hat from Temple of Doom, but. Um, yeah, this, this is the better one. I do that. It the, makes a little whoosh noise as it, he gets it. It does. They do the, the hat one. Uh, I'm pretty sure, like, that's been done in, like, a lot of other forms of media and other TV shows. Absolutely. Um, I think one of my the more notable ones, I think, when I was a kid, I think is, like, the start of maybe, like, one of the Rugrats movies. And I think they were mm. trying to do, like, an Indiana Jones thing. And Tommy, like, gets the hat across and stuff. Looks really good. I used to love those Rugrats movies. They were damn good. For future film clubs, we shall see. It's bit animated. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so this is the part where the click view version of the film does its first kind of omission. Yeah, it really like threw me off completely on uh, last Friday. So. Yeah, and potentially puts in a clip from earlier in the film of when the the skeleton comes out. Oh, the skelly, yeah. Because so usually yeah, you see yeah. Alfred Molina impaled or a. a Body double of Alfred like Molina impaled, the little spikes coming through, and his face is like, he's Norma Desmonding in this point. They would have actually have had to have made an edit where they put something additional in instead of just cutting down the film, which is wild. Because then, like, you get that, and then Indy suddenly has the idol again. So it's yeah. like, what happened to Alfred Molina? That's he what, became a skeleton. That's what all the kids were asking when they left film clubs. Like, sir, where's Alfred Molina? And I was like, guys... I don't know. Where'd he go? <laughs> he went off uh, to New York to study science and physics. So uh, that he Mary could have Rosie, the power, power of, of the, the sun, sun in the palm of his hand. Exactly. Oh, my goodness. That's that's the uh, Spider-Man 2 is a legacy sequel for Raiders of the Lost Ark. Everyone knows that. And Everyone if you didn't, does. you're an idiot. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Strong stance <laughs> no, on that's that right. one. 
Um, so as he as he starts to leave, thinking finally the dangers are behind him, the big old boulder comes down, and I love that turnaround as he sees it. It's and a he's, real. Uh, he's running, but it's not like a a smooth run. He falls down a couple of times onto his they, knees, which they keep like from like the original takes and stuff. Rather yeah, than just like reshoot it, which is good. I love it. And then he makes the final dive outside of the temple. Balok is there. Renee. Oh, Renee Balok. He has befriended the Havitos. Because he can speak Havitos. He can speak Havitos. If only Indy could speak Havitos, he could have warned them that he was not to be trusted. The Havitos don't know him like he does. They really don't. But <laughs> as Balok turns his back and the, uh, the tribe is cheering for the golden idol being raised in the air, Indy's like, I'm out, skis, and, and goes off running. And what, is, what does Balok do, Mr. Boylan? He dabs and then. <laughs> he, ksh, ksh. <laughs> That's what he does. That's what he does. That's what he does. Now he, he goes. That old. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, but we had a big, big debate about this just moments ago, moments ago. before we started this podcast like, about what's... what is the actual hand gesture that he does. And look, to be fair, I'd say we were both wrong. I'd say I thought it was like a sign of the cross. You thought it was a that way, that way. <laughs> it was like, yeah. And then he kind of does kind of a, almost like a combination of both of ours together. Like, mm. uh, yeah, exactly. He's like wax on, wax off, basically. That's it. That's, That's very it, topical for my hey, weekly watches. Spoiler alert. It's uh, so yeah. they all go chasing after Indy. Um, and I love that it stays on Balak for a second so we can do this gigantic <laughs> ominous maniacal laugh he'd been listening to the the fifth period intros and that's thought it. i need to top mr boylan, mr. boylan. <laughs> that's that's what he said um and it carries over it cuts to indy running and you can still, still hear balak laughing <laughs> <laughs> but again he's not smooth he's not cool he's like fleeing he's panicked Yelling out to Jacques. Jacques! Jacques! The engine! Start it! It's so on. good. But Jacques's like, I got fish to catch, man. Yeah, I know. I love it that he, he's like basically finished and he's like, mm, okay. All bye. right, fine. I'll, I'll, I'll go do what probably Indy's paid me to do, which is fly pain, not fish That's somewhere it. in uh, a rainforest. Mm. You idiot. You idiot. So anyway, Indy swings and we get the du, 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 du. Just a, first time just the music a, is just kicked a little in. bit just a little bit just a little we'll, bit for we'll his triumphant swing <laughs> jumps into the plane and they start to fly off now let me ask you this yep <clears throat> how long was jacques there for because days presumably indy's gone into town he's recruited some other people to help him out they didn't all come in on the, nah, on the two, plane together it's a two-seater or it's a two-seater maybe a two and a half seater if you really that being said down. maybe indy didn't come on the plane either and he just met shark there because he didn't even know that his pet snake reggie was reggie. in the cockpit otherwise yeah like you know got an opportunity to, to show a little backbone mm, mm. that's a that's a good gag he's just done all these death defying stunts and then he says, show a little backbone. This is like, you've been fishing. He's like, for days. I hate Snake Shark. I hate him. So we cut across to the school where he is a professor of archaeology. Professor of archaeology by day, treasure hunter by night. Or tomb robber or grave robber or any of these sort of things. Whatever you want to call loose. it. Whatever you want to call it. But the students love him. One in particular. Wow, yeah. There's one that says love you oh, on, on the old eyelids you've it, got that on your eyelids today don't you no ah oh, forgot he was supposed to uh but <laughs> it like even take that student out of the mix the rest of them do still seem pretty engrossed by it yeah and i can kind of understand that not necessarily in this scene but in the one that follows I am hanging on every word he says. He has this down-to-earth kind of quality that you could understand why the students would be engaged in that 100%. Class. People were clamoring to take his class. That's and, it. Uh, yeah, it's, um, you know, be, be, uh, he's an engaging teacher. He's got all the, all the skills. And not, not engaging enough for Brody, though. You want to hear about it? Not at all. One of the things you talk about, like the voodoo, and it kind of sets up that, like, although he's someone who is a massive historian, he mm -hmm. doesn't quite believe 
in, uh, I guess, more supernatural elements that are potentially well, fair enough. I believe in history, proven history. <laughs> I mean, some people don't, so. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> that's a good point. But I do, just to establish. But yeah. The, good to know. We're all waiting. Brody comes in, old Marcus comes in. Marcus. And he's like, oh, you've done another adventure. I don't really need to hear about it. Where's, but Where's my stuff? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Gimme, gimme. He does the old Alfred Molina claw hands. Um, and yeah, you essentially find out that they usually go on these little adventures. They give it to the museum and then they get a small finder's yeah, fee. So it's it, a is, bit a, of a it is a donation, but he does get funded for these trips. And um, yeah, Marcus kind of does those negotiations for him. Yep. And then um, work out that yeah, he's like, I had it right in my hand. And then like, like basically let me guess. I was like, yeah, it was Bella. So it establishes that this isn't just like a fresh antagonist for Indy, nah. that they've been sort of rivals for a while, sort of in an uh, Indiana Jones extended universe. Mm -hmm. And they explain the fact that they actually went to school together um, at the Sorbonne. Uh, they become mates. Um, but Belloc basically screws Indy over and like takes, you know, plagiarizes a lot of his work again. and then actually wins an award for it. Whoa. So that kind of Whoa. sets up this sort of thing, like this, uh, you know, the one that Sir Belloc has a number of times, like what uh, once was yours is now mine. And it's constantly sort of, yeah, right. Belloc sort of quite often like piggybacking off what Indy has done and is doing enough to trump him essentially. So that happens a few times sort of in their build up, And again, so it, it sets up that, you know, Indy hates this guy. Mm. I do want to do more extended universe stuff. So we should do the it, Young Indiana Jones Chronicles. For no, Film Club. no, <laughs> it's probably a little hard to see on the camera, but they're they're my comics on the wall uh, up behind Mr. Boylan, and uh, they're two of quite a few that I've got at home. Someone, a friend of mine, gave them to me for my birthday, Very cool. and yeah, I've only read a couple of them so far, but I want to read a heap more and see if it like builds onto what we already know, if they're separate adventures, whatever it might be. Yeah, because, I mean, like, this universe, like, it sets up... It, it, this isn't a film that, like, talks down. Like, it's, mm. it establishes that these characters have, uh, you know, been here for a while. Yep. Uh, there's past relationships that have existed, and they unpack stuff a little bit, but they not everything. Like, there's not... Mm -mm. It's not a film, particularly this first one, that gets strays too much into, like, these gigantic expo dumps. 100%. So Marcus basically tells Indy that there's two army intelligent agents mm. that want to chat to him. And he's like, get me out of this, man. Why do they want to chat to me? Um, but essentially what they have uh, come to talk to him about, the Nazis are currently digging in Cairo and they're looking for religious artifacts to give to Hitler. Um, and they want to know more about it. They're not quite sure of what they're looking for. They have some communications that they've intercepted and the name that keeps coming up in the communications is uh, Abner... Ravenwood. Ravenwood, of course, Marion's dad. Abner Ravenwood. And so because he used to be Indy's mentor and friend, they come and talk to Indy about it and see if he can provide any sort of insight into that. Um, so essentially, from the bits of information they give him, he works out that they are looking for the, the Well of Souls in Cairo, which is supposed to be the resting place for the Ark of the Covenant, mm. the big chest that has the remnants of the Ten Commandments that have been smashed up. Um, and as I said, this whole sequence is so engrossing. I mean, you say they don't do an exposition dump, and I think the reason it doesn't feel like they do is because the dynamics between these characters and the fact that like Indy says a little bit, then Brody kind of chimes in with some additional information. You cut back to the guys who are trying to make sense of it and they're like oh do you mean this part and they start chiming in as well and it's a little it's a little dance between the four of them and it's really really well done i really like particularly in this scene when uh indy starts to describe the headpiece that mm. apparently abner might have and the staff itself and he starts to draw and obviously it's something i would have noticed when i was a kid but the camera briefly cuts to Marcus looking at Indy with such a sense of pride and admiration yes. for the man he's turned into. And then once he starts to work out how close Marcus is and the relationship that Marcus has with Indy's dad as well in later films, it makes sense that like this continual uh, like growth of pride he has for you know someone who's watched grow up um, pretty much. So um, that yeah, again like a little thing like I noticed on my uh, with a watch pre pod, and I was like, oh, that's really good. It's just briefly, but the fact that, yeah, just the way he's looking at it, it's just like, 
He's cooking. I'm it's, so proud. <laughs> it's really good. And like the different visual stimulus that they give you during this as well, him drawing the headpiece, but then also it cuts to the book and it shows like the power of God coming out of the ark. And yeah, the, yeah. the imagery is beautiful, but it's the first time we hear the very eerie ark music. So good. And this was when I wrote my note about the music. I love that different aspects of the film have their own little themes. Yep. Like, there's the Marian love theme, mm. there's the arc ominous theme, there's the indie triumphant theme, and they just keep coming back in and out. And sometimes they blend together seamlessly in a scene depending True. on what's happening or mm. what the camera is focused on. Yeah, the score it's, here is yeah. Yeah, it's so good. Uh, John Williams was on, on his game. Yes, that's just what the Hebrews thought. They do allude to this idea that there is some sort of powerful magical force lightning fire barragat or something yeah and you can tell indy's like whatever yeah as he's saying it yeah. but it's still a really powerful idea and it scares them and, yeah. and they think well we don't want the nazis to get their hands on that as marcus so, like can level mountains and exactly so marcus wheels and deals with them and uh they agree to fund indy to go to cairo and intercept and try and recover the Ark before the Nazis can. So apparently there was supposed to be an additional scene here. That's why he's in the bathrobe. Oh. Apparently there's supposed to be a shot that revealed actually they had some company over at the house. Oh. But Spielberg didn't really want him to seem like too much of like a Woman James answer. Bond sort of Lothario type character. It's funny you say that because Spielberg wanted to make a James Bond movie instead of this movie. There you go. And uh, you imagine a Spielberg Bond movie. Yeah, well, he just really liked the idea. Um, but George Lucas was like, no, 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 no. I got something better than Bond. I got this. I got Indiana Jones. Who's that? Sit down. I'll tell you yeah, the tale. I will. Um, but yeah, like the fact that, you know, like Marcus really shows his concern. It's just like this is different or bigger than anything you've done before almost. He, no need for him to be concerned. He knows what a cautious fellow he is. He's got a gun. <laughs> He's got a gun. He's fine. <laughs> he travels to Nepal to go find Abner, but he doesn't find Abner. He finds Abner's daughter, Marion, who uh, he had a romantic tryst with. Yes. Um, so basically, the, the story with Marion and Indy is that uh, Abner was like his mentor, and they yep. used to go on like um, adventures together. And I think he studied under Abner as well. So. Yeah, but Marion also used to get dragged along on the adventures. So they had a little bit of a, a romantic affair. And then when Abner found out, he was disapproving because there was quite a sizable age gap between yep. them. They never 100% say, but roughly it's about a 10-year age gap, and she alludes to the fact that she was quite young in this. She says, I was a child, it was wrong, and you knew it. So people then, have yeah. debated what age. It gets a little icky, but Murky. people yep. think she was around 16-ish. 16-ish, yeah. 16, 17. And he was like 26, 27. Yeah, uh, so. but, you know, it was the 20s. It was a different time. It really was. <laughs> um, but controversial or not... Marion is by far the best romantic relationship that Indy has throughout the series. Not even close. Like, well, yeah, it's, yeah, Karen Allen and then Daylight. She just plays the role so brilliantly. She really does. As someone who, like, steps up to Indy, like, calls him out on his stuff. Uh, Immediately. Punched to the face. Kind of established the fact that she can kind of... I guess, like, go toe-to-toe -to -toe with people mm -hmm. in different circumstances. Uh, one of those being a drinking contest uh, where she more than comfortably handles her shots. Yeah, so they, they establish her as, like, a perfect counterpart to him. Like, she can fight in the bar fight. She can she can hold her liquor. Not in a later fight. I'll get to that, though. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, that, that does kind of shift and change as the film goes on. Yep. Um, but, yeah, it... It shows that she's like, yeah, she's strong. She can she can hold her own. And I even like little moments that she has, like in the bar fight. At one point, a barrel gets shot, and she like drinks drink, from yeah. it like, while she's fighting. It's so just, good. it's very very good. Yeah. So she says she won't help Indy, and she doesn't know where the medallion is that he's looking for. And Abner's and dead. Abner has passed away. So. Yeah. Um, I read that he died in an avalanche, but they don't explicitly state that in they this don't. movie. They don't. No, they just said he's dead, and he's like, oh, sorry. Mm. So. Yeah, she's like, oh, look, maybe come back tomorrow. He offers her some money. She's like, maybe come back tomorrow, whatever. And so he, he heads off. Um, explosive punch, by the way. I Abs love that sound effect. All of the sound effects, we'll talk about some of them that are going to kick off very shortly 
But, or um, punch off. Oh, that, that too. She's understandably pretty bitter about the fact that he just left her 10 years ago. No, no, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. And he just comes back as like, hey, you know, well, we used to date like a while, so uh, I need this thing that was for your dad. And he, he really does have like a smugness about him when he arrives. Like, you happy to see me? Like, no, she isn't. She's about to kill you. Yeah. She going to kill um, you. So he, he ducks out, but the Nazis have followed him. And they totally basically... It's Tote. We had to look up because they never actually say his name in the film. We had to look up how you pronounce it. What were some of the other ones? Tote? Tote. 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 But tot. Arnold Tote. Tote who's tot a, is what, yeah. Who's a really creepy man. He's super creepy. Like Ronald Lacey kills it in the role. He plays the, he's like um, a Gestapo agent. Yeah, um, I love like when he's just, the he's like holding the, the blade. Let me show you what I am used to. Like, yep. So uh, good. <laughs> So good. Um, so, yeah, he tortures Marion for the same medallion. Exactly. Um, she's doing some good cigarette acting in this scene, too. That's pretty good. Um, it's it's right up there with Samuel L. Jackson from Jurassic Park. <laughs> some really, really good cigarette acting. Um, but, fortunately, Indy hasn't gone too far. Let her go. Yeah, tot, uh, tote, sorry. I'm going to keep calling him tot or tote. 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 Uh, it's old Toadie. He uh, lo tote. loses his patience and uh, gets the fire poker out. He loses and his patience very quickly. He's like, nah, t not, I I'm going to do what I do best, which is She's like, whoa, 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 whoa. I'll tell you everything. He's like, he's like, yes, I know you will. Yeah. And a great shot, just the poker coming up to the face. Marion's terrified expression. Yeah. The sweat coming off his face as well. Looks really, really cool. Um, I was I just, just did this research before the podcast and I was looking up some more fun trivia facts. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a very different type of character. Tote was going to have a mechanical arm with a machine gun built into it Ooh, with yeah. a bionic eye and a radar antenna in his head. So, Robo Tote. Yeah, Robo, Robo Tote or the, the, the Totonator, I guess. <laughs> it's fine. The Totonator. <laughs> uh, I'm glad they didn't do that. Yes, yes. There is some silly moments in this film, but they all work. That didn't get I do not think would have worked. Steven Spielberg would have been a bit of a silly billy. He would have been <laughs> a right silly billy. Um, so, yeah, pretty ballsy of uh, old Jones to whip the fire poker out of his hand when it's that close to Marion's face. It shows how much he cares about her. Yeah, true. <laughs> true. Um, but it breaks out into a full-blown bar fight and a fire as well. Is, uh, yeah, the fire poker goes into the curtain and then the liquor's on the bar. Stakes are high. Whiskey. Thank um, you. <laughs> That's what he says. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's a good fight. I like the action here. There's a couple of really key moments in it. One is that uh, the medallion is, rolls into the fire at one point and Tote grabs it and, like, burns his hand. And I love that. It's, it's very Home Alone. <laughs> Tote and Joe Pesci. That's it. They're, they're one and the same. And we don't really see him for a little bit. Yeah, um, but the other cool moment from it, and this is obviously before he runs outside, he's like, shoot them. Shoot them both. And both the bad guy henchmen like, Seriously? and Indy then work together and pull the gun out it's to like, shoot the other guy. He's like, no, you, we're going to keep fighting. But the sound design for the gun sounds absolutely bonkers. Oh, yeah. Indy's got a cannon for a pistol oh, yeah, that yeah, sounds yeah. like it's punching holes in a wall. It does have some of those twangy gunshot sound effects like uh, James Bond as well. You have like Golden Eye on 64. It's like, <laughs> Wheel! It's so good. I didn't know what that was going to sound like. It doesn't really sound like that, but. It's more like a lower pitch, like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it's good. I'll put it in. <laughs> Just put that. Just put that in. Woo! <laughs> it's like a slowed down Tobey Maguire woo. <laughs> woo! Woo! Anyway, so a bit of teamwork in this fight between old Marion and Indy. Um, and so she rescues the medallion. They get out. And since her bar is now burning down, she agrees to help him out if yeah. he takes her along. Good banter here. Yeah. You, you got more than you bargained for. I'm your goddamn yeah, partner. Or I think, like, what's the line that she says? She's like, oh, at least you haven't forgotten how to show a lady a good time. Really good. <laughs> oh, the bar's basically in tatters. It's, it's pretty it's like, good. Like, where else is she going to go? She's going to go with Indy. That's it. All the way to Cairo. So we meet up with Salah. Now, I don't actually think, does Salah wear this hat in this film? He definitely wears it in Last, Last Crusade. Crusade. Doesn't 
He's got a lot of hats like that one. He does. Yeah. He's a bit more of like a... Yeah, I don't think he's got the fess. Um, but yeah, John Rhys Davies as Sulla is, you know, is fantastic. Um, he's like a really like warm character. Mm-hmm. Who, again, so someone that Indy knows because um, like Sulla and his like company are basically uh, the people digging for the Ark. Yep. So he knows what's going on. He's 100%. Like, he can give all the information. Um, yeah, he and very quickly reveals that there's, there's a Frenchman. There's a Frenchman working with them. They call him Baloche. Oh, sh- and, and then Indy laughs. Belloc. 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 It's the funniest joke he's ever heard. Oh, my God. Salah. That good one. Good one. Classic Salah. Good classic. Just mispronouncing names. That's it. All he does is mispronounce names and sing, I am the monarch of, of the sea. sea. I am the ruler of Gadoop. <laughs> Gadoop. Because <laughs> yeah, it cuts off really quickly. <laughs> I am the monarch of the sea. I am the ruler of the... Co- uh, they go and hang out in the markets. Marion's got a lovely change of clothes with some lovely red pants. Um, Very inconspicuous. Yeah, I was going to say, it sticks out like a sore thumb. Mm. And two white people walking around Cairo, and one of them's got red pants on yeah. and a white shirt with they're red just, on it too. They're just hanging out and eating dates. I love it. Chat it's to a, a monkey. You eat them. Yeah, I like that. The, the, the way he says it. You so eat them. You eat them. <laughs> um, so a bunch of Nazis slash mercenaries then end up attacking them. And that's because the monkey helps find them. Yeah, the Nazi monkey. This is so good. Apparently it took like 50 takes for the monkey to do the Nazi salute. It was George Lucas that got him to do it in the end by hanging some grapes off camera. Uh, it's Spielberg's camera. favorite scene in the movie. I don't get that. <laughs> I mean, it's his movie. He can pick, he can pick whatever his scene That's he fine. wants, but it wouldn't be the one that I'd pick. Not, not, in, um, not in the top 30. No, <laughs> but one of my absolute favorite moments is coming up in this sequence. So Indy is fighting all of the guys. Oh my like, God. Explosive punches. Marion is in the background <laughs> and she's got this metal tin and she's just going, dunk, donk, dunk, donk, dunk. It's like donk. the softest thing ever. Also as well, when Indy's like, duck, and then punches a guy behind her, the way she stands up, she's just like, yeah, whoops. <laughs> um, and this is when we also get some some pretty rad whipping as well. So Harrison whoops Ford cracking. actually did all like the training with the whips as well. He, I mean, you hear a lot of stories these days of Harrison Ford not really wanting to commit to roles and somewhat phoning it in or whatever. Not back but then. No, not back then and not with this character. This is one of the his most beloved characters. Maybe and, the most beloved. Well, and rightfully so because it, it's a freaking awesome. rad character. Um, so, yeah, he did all like the whip training and stuff himself. I think in some of the later films they added some CG whip. A little bit. Whippage. Um, but, yeah, he's just, he looks awesome. And he's not wearing his jacket at this point. He's got the, just, the shirt just the shit but they get separated and so marion gets kind of chased off and while she's getting chased off who should confront indy but a guy with the most ginormous sword in the world and this again is Iconic. one of my absolute favorites um great story behind it but the guy does this big kind of flippity doodah with it, the sword chugging a band and you can just see and he's like oh, oh. God. And he just takes out his pistol, I'm, shoots the guy. I'm over it. And it's so good. I mean, fair enough to be over it because uh, Harrison Ford was over it doing this scene. He sure was. Yeah. Him and the rest of the crew too. Yeah, so yeah, filming in Tunisia and they just all got food poisoning. Food poisoning. The only one who didn't was Spielberg because he was like eating sp- tin spaghetti. SpaghettiOs and bottled water. It's so, so good. good. So they're like, they were trying. So this, like, yeah, like the scene was supposed to be... Um, in the whipping the sword out of mm-hmm. his hand, which I'm sure would have looked really cool. Yep. Um, but they couldn't get it right. It, everyone was really wrecked, obviously, because you've got food poisoning. Yeah. And you're trying to work through that. Uh, and then Harrison Ford was, was like, just like, why, why don't I shoot him? And they're like, okay, let's try that. Um, and apparently George Lucas still didn't like it after he did it. Oh, well. But then it tested incredibly well with audiences. And he it, was like, okay. We, that could we, stay. We know that George Lucas doesn't always know what's best for his products, so that's fine. This is true. This is true. Um, but I love it. It's so, so good. Um, and so, yeah, Marion kind of runs away. That chase sequence is a little like Scooby-Doo going in and out of doors. <laughs> Even the score as well with the clarinets. <laughs> Indy's trying to find her. There's like 
some fun sort of bits where she's like sort of in the back of the frame going mm -hmm. different alleys. And then it's like, okay, I see she's in the basket. And then I come to the open marketplace and everyone's got baskets. I love that shot. He goes around the corner and he's like, oh. Oh no. There's so many of those good like face close-ups and just like before you even see what he's looking at, you get a clear idea of this is exactly it's how he's feeling. Yeah. Um, and then he's just wrecking people. Pushing the shopping. baskets everywhere. <laughs> Imagine if she was in one, you'd just take her out. <laughs> <laughs> um, but look, this part I've always been a bit like, she was clearly in that basket. So you could hear her screaming and yelling, go, Indy! And they put her in the back of the truck and it's just like explosives in big writing on everything. It's, it's, a, a, it's a great shot. Like it's him running out and alleyway. then being like, Ugh, yeah. and coming back against the wall. Big old explosion. Um, and so... Yeah, Marion is seemingly dead. Um, I don't. We find out later they switch baskets, but I, I don't know when and how. Where. <laughs> yeah, but whatever. Suspend disbelief. Um, so Indy's in the bar, uh, drinking away his sorrows, and with Bella comes in with the monkey. <laughs> He's still b friends with the monkey. But the, like, yeah, the fact that they keep going back to this monkey's like the monkey's a baddie. Yeah. Or like you know. Oh, don't worry. He it. gets his. Uh, so Balak comes stumbling in and, and with gloats. This hat. And with that hat, this he's Balak. Did you get it, guys? He was Balak <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> big twist. This is a movie prop from big, Raiders. Big twist. Um, so he comes in and he and he gloats. And there's some, some good dialogue here. Good like banter. I love the shadowy reflection of each other yeah. kind of dialogue. They only take a nudge to make you like me, to push you out of the light. Yes. Really good. Um, I also love when he describes if he buries the pocket watch in the sand for a thousand years, then it would be worth a fortune. Um, like, I love how, or oh, I think he even says priceless. Um, but I, I love that because it then sets up later on when he's burying Indy. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, we'll get there. Um, um, the fact that, yeah, then they sort of, he's talking about the arc. Um, it's like, do you know what this is? It's a transmitter. Uh, well, sounds like Arnie there. Uh, <laughs> it's a transmitter. Yeah, but all well, they've tried to have a Terminator in this film. <laughs> You've got me. Um, so and it's like it's a radio to God, and then Indy's mm. like, "You want to talk, talk to, to God? God. Let's like, go see him together." <laughs> yeah, I love that one. So he's like, my, "I got nothing better to do." Exactly. Marion's dead. Like, what else has he got to live for? I'm gonna yeah. take my ally down. But hey, it's all good. Who could come and save him? But a bunch of kiddos. Mm. Oh, although, you know, there's some saucy dialogue in this scene, too. No? Indy goes, now you're getting nasty. Oh. And then Balak goes, you know it's true. <laughs> it's so weird. Those two Bit lines. Bit of flirty antagonism. Yeah, like, yeah there's some flirty energy there. Renee. Um, oh. oh, my goodness. <laughs> Stop it. The French, am I right? French class. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so yes, what a what a call Salah, Salah sends all his kids in to, to get in between no, Indy want, and a bunch of guns. And one of the kids is a Nick Salinsky. <laughs> French <laughs> just cuts in. <laughs> oh dear. Um, oh. So they they go and get the medallion translated and realize it indicates how long to make the staff to attach to the medallion yep. to then show them the way in the map room. Um, and I love the interpreter's voice. It's come, so sit, high pitched. Sit down. Come, sit, come, sit down. Come, come. Look, look here. Look. I wonder how you would take this scene the first time you watched it, not knowing that Marion is still alive. Because they really it, brush is, over it. Like Sally even goes, yeah. "Life goes on." Yeah, literally, it's so quick. It's just like Marion's dead. I'm sorry. Life goes on, my yeah. friend. <laughs> it's, it's wild. Cold. Um, maybe so, uh, maybe like, you just assume she is alive. He's in on it. And maybe. maybe. Well, he is digging for the Nazis. It's true. Um, so, yeah, they also discover, too, Salah has found out that they did have their own version of the medallion as well that they use. But they don't know where it's, it's come it's from. It's only one-sided because obviously it's come from the, the burnt hand of uh, old Tote. Old, old, old Tote. Tote. <laughs> and so the... Engravings on one side, it's like the staff has to be this long, and then on the other side, they're like, "Psych, take, take off back one a couple of these." Um, and so they realize if theirs is only one sided, they're, they're digging in the, the wrong, wrong place. place. Very, very good. And so they're very excited, and Indy wants to celebrate with a date. Throws it up in the air. Bad dates. Bad and dates. And the monkey be dead because he be in the dates. Yeah. 
cool shot as well, like with the fan going past oh, and stuff like it. that. It's right. a very good shot, and that monkey deserved it. Mm. Yeah, probably. Well, at this point, we still think he's killed Marion. <laughs> the monkey's killed Marion. <laughs> <laughs> just leaps off the guy's shoulder and is like strangling Mary to death. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, oh. We have fun. Uh, we, we do have fun. We do have we fun. Do have fun. Um, but yeah, basically now. Uh, to the map room. To the map room they go. And this whole sequence. Oh, awesome. So good. So good. So yeah, the gets in his you can again like showing his intelligence by looking at his notes mm -hmm. uh doing the right calculations to work out okay cool this is where i need to place the staff yep score change as well when the staff goes into the ground and again that arc theme yes slow kind of uh, the camera starts to move down to show the staff and then indy's like expression of mm -hmm. like anticipation uh and wonder particularly um as the light sort of it just Goes it's through. All rad. It's very good. Goes past the the false digging spot that's Where been marked with X. Yes. Um, and then it, yeah, it goes. Obviously, it's in a different location. Uh, and then when the light hits everything, and the indie okay. smile on his face is like, yeah, he really enjoys what he does mm -hmm. about discovering things, and that's really like apparent in the scene. Oh, absolutely. Um, so yeah, he he gets out now that they've found the new location. He gets out, um, but. There's, there's nuts is everywhere, so he has to duck into a tent. And he does a funny spinny, too. He does do a funny spinny, and who should be in the tent? I mean, coinky dink of a lifetime. I know, of all tents to stumble into. Of all the gin joints in all the towns in all the world, she walks into mine. In a bit of a dick move, realizes that if he releases her, they're going to know that he's there, and they'll immediately start searching. And, so won't be able like, to, and they won't be able to get the ark. Let me get the ark. Then I'll come back for you. Priorities. Yeah, Am and right? she is pissed, rightfully so. Yeah. Um, but again, it's a smart, it's a smart move, even if it's uh, a bit of a, but not a great move. Correct. So yeah, but then they start digging for the well of salts. They do cool um, shots as well, like the when he's digging. using the telescope to like measure out where it is. That's mm. a great shot. That yeah. actually reminded me of the um, the Fate of Atlantis game, which we were talking about a couple oh, of yeah. weeks back. Yep. Um, it was one of those like point and click PC games yep. and is still rated as one of the best Indiana Jones video games ever. Yeah, one of the best point and click games too. It's so, so good. You said you hadn't played it? I hadn't it? played it, no. Um, no I that's highly, how it's ranked. I don't know. highly recommend if you can get some sort of an emulator for it. I'll get it emulators, don't no worry. It is a great game. Like puzzle solving. Um, there are punch-ons with the explosive sound effects as well. Love that. Um, it's just, it's really cool. It feels like its own movie as well. That's, yeah, I think like, like, I, I do like the extended adventures that go in on, on the games and stuff like that. Things like Emperor's Tomb, uh, Fate of Atlantis is another one, Infernal Machine, all these sort of mm -hmm. ones. It's really good. Really good shot as well too um, when they do start digging and the sun's coming down and it's oh. got him changing his outfits back onto his hat and stuff against the sunset. Silhouette Cash. is so good um and yeah i love that they've also just recruited a bunch of diggers They're like come come dig over here instead like this is really where the arc is yeah and this is a this is one of those parts where i was like well surely people would see them like they're only just over a ridge and there's not just two of them plus he's he's posing in his iconic indiana jones outfit with the sun behind him exactly belloc's like i'm not the only one who wears hats that must be him D that is one of Balak's like famous, famous lines, lines. <laughs> um, but yeah. After the sun goes down, then we're in a studio. Correct. And I don't mind this look either. It doesn't look too bad. It's not too janky, like because there's a supernatural kind of element to it. I think it sort of works. Mm. Um, and Indy looks absolutely crazy in this section. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, he's got this like very wide-eyed Norma Desmond kind of look about him. Um, she's getting a few shout-outs. I was going to say, Desmond is up all over the podcast. Well, Norma, what are you doing here? <laughs> it must have been a heavy influence for Spielberg. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I actually really like these kind of studio shots and with the with the lightning behind them and yeah, very, very good. And they, they open it up, the Well of Souls, and there's the big statue there and the lightning comes down. Solid. And Salo goes, oh! And then goes, <laughs> rolls away. Sorry, Indy. <laughs> I was a bit scared. He was just a wee bit scared. And then he's like, Indy, why does the floor, floor. move? Mm. And, and why does the floor move? Uh, 
because of the CGI that they use. No, it's because of the snakes. And uh, and not real. CGI, real snakes. 10,000 so of them. They did have some kind of robotic ones, but they looked a bit fake. So we sent half the production crew out to just pet shops locally to get as many snakes as they possibly could. Wow. And they did get between eight to 10,000 in the end, but it still was just like a small fraction of that giant set that they had built. So they ended up getting lengths of hose as well and yep. cutting them and just mixing them all in together. It looks incredible. I think, yeah, it uh, looks terrifying. Mm. I mean, it looks terrifying for us, but let alone someone who we've established his greatest fear is snakes. Yeah. The fact that he just rolls away from the edge, basically almost like in a fetal position, being like, why did it have to be snakes? Asps. Very dangerous. You go you first. Go first. <laughs> You go first. Iconic land. While he's uh, while he's convincing Indy to go first, we cut back to uh, to Balok and uh, Marion. Yeah, they've uh, and he's trying to wine and dine her. He is. So uh, yeah, he comes in. He's he's got a dress ready to go, and I love this. She's like stuffing her face full of food, um, and he gives her the dress, and he's like, "I'd very much like to see you in it." And, <laughs> and she's like, would. Oh, "I bet you would." I bet you would. So good. And he's just like. Yes. yes, I would. Like Indy, she's very clever. And she realizes, you know what? I'll play along. I'll get him drunk. Because I can, I'll now, make my I can now drink everyone. So well, they've established that already. World building. Yeah. Um. So yeah, <laughs> they they do that and they they're playing along. And we cut back to Indy and Salah going into the temple. And I love the shot of Indy as he falls down and he's face to face with, with the, the cobra. Snake. Yeah. Oh, pretty cool. Good. Face to face with his fears. Uh, Indy sort of. Uh, it makes a good call to cover them in oil, essentially, and mm. set them on fire. Uh, and I love the cut between when the snakes go up in flames to lightning cracking while Marion and Balok are eating. Ah, uh, yes. And it cuts back to that. And clearly, they're a little bit uh, inebriated by this stage. You know this whole scene was improv No. That's so cool. the two actors were just riffing off each other, and you can t you can oh, kind of tell no, that. I can definitely. The but the dialogue is so good. Um, she says something about the bottle of wine, and then he's like, "I grew up with it. <laughs> it it's my parents' brand, or something like that. It's and their it's label." Just, it's just laughing his yeah, head off. It's so the fact good that um, once she gets changed, she covers the, the knife. knife with the uh, old clothes. But then when she like goes to pull it out, it out? and he just bursts out laughing. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like, well, party's over, unfortunately. Yeah, because old tote. Totes back. Totes. <laughs> and then walking in. as the most threatening weapon that we've ever seen. It is so, so funny. You think it's like some variation like of a, a nun It's like a toitcha. A toitcha. A toitcha. A toitcha. It's a toitcha device. <laughs> it's a toitcha device. Hey, from Toadie. You uh, sound like, um, <laughs> you've seen the animated Anastasia. Yes. Anastasia, sir, just wishing I could do the job for you, sir. I'd give her a ha, then a hi ya, and then a woo And I kick her, sir. It's a torture device. A torture like that. Uh, yeah. While the device is basically being assembled, Belloc is also terrified. terrified. As well as they're, they're both like, oh. And then once I realize it, it's a coat hanger for his jacket, the sigh of relief from Belloc is like, oh God, I thought he's going to torture me too. Just so good. So we cut back to Indy and Salah. Because they, they have, the Ark. They have found the Ark. Tell you who else they've found. Who's that? C-3PO and oh, R2-D2. Yeah. <laughs> the hieroglyphics on the wall. Yeah, it's pretty good. They managed to lift it. They're very strong. They, they, a couple of strong boys. Okay, they're a couple of strong boys. They have their, their Wheaties in the morning. They do. Yeah, so they get the Ark and they, they hoist it up and hoist. Sala ends up leaving. But before Indy can get out, Rope's who should down. arrive? It's Renee. Hello. Hello down there. He's such a performer. <laughs> he really I is. I love it. I really, really love it. He's so campy. Um, and he's like, why don't you come down and I'll show you. Thank you, my friend. Uh, we are quite comfortable up here. Are we all comfortable? Like looking for ingredients? And some of the Germans are like, mm, yes, mm. comfortable. Who knows? In a thousand years, even you may be worth something. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's so, so good. Uh, so they chuck Marion down to him. Uh, much to Balok's chagrin, yeah, cause he wanted to keep Marion all for himself. He did. He was uh, quite infatuated with her because he said, "Marion, you're beautiful." <laughs> really weird delivery. <laughs> Marion, you're beautiful. <laughs> Gets thrown down, uh, clutches onto. I don't know if it's a statue of Anubis or something like that, but 
Basically. Well, it's been down there for a long time. It's probably an old bus by now. <sighs> Disgusting. Lee Goys. Uh, <laughs> she comes down off old an obus, um, an old bus. <laughs> An obvious, and then it's a dag, but perfectly caught by Indy. Yes, uh, and uh, you know, uh, Renee bids uh, them all uh, Indiana Jones adieu, adieu, adieu. And the cut to Sala's face as the as it closes, Marion screams, is just like, ah! and then it's like, damn. Anyway, let's anyway, move on. we'll move on. So they've got to try what, to. What does Sala say? Life goes on, Indy. The torches are fading, so mm. clearly. Uh, they're not going to be able to hold off the snakes is a problem. Uh, Fun fact about this. Yeah. So, uh, Karen, Karen, uh, Karen, Karen Allen. Karen Allen. Karen Allen. Um, Karen Allen was afraid of snakes. And oh, no. her stunt double was equally afraid of snakes. So double any of the close-ups of her bare legs with the snakes kind of climbing over it, it's the male snake handler. Wow. So Spielberg was like, will you shave your legs for it? He's like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. What a, pro. There, right? what a pro. What a pro. I know. Earlier you were like, yeah, the snakes, they're gonna they're not gonna play into the plot at all. But he gets over his fear pretty quickly. He's like, completely surrounded. Especially the one when he's climbing the statue and he just burns it with his mouth. He's pretty good at facing his fears. He really he's an inspiration is. to us all. Um, to me especially. Yep. Are we your big fear of snakes? Uh no, I just easily inspired. Fair enough. Uh so he pushes the statue. <laughs> through the wall because he suspects that there might be a way out because that the seems snake, to be where yeah. the snakes are coming from. Yep. Um, can you imagine how they would have shot that scene of the snakes going through those holes? Just like feeding them through There's them? just someone behind us going, quick, more snakes. <laughs> more snakes. More snakes. Um, uh, they go crashing through. Uh, they do go crashing through. And this is what my second Lego set is. The actual statue falls over. That's cool. Yeah, Love so that. both of them are like movable. Yeah, very cool. Uh, this next bit, pretty creepy. Like, mm-hmm. the fact that, like, sort of Marion's like, oh, geez, what's happened? And at one stage, I thought it was almost like a dream sequence because she was, like, knocked out or whatever, but... And because the dead bodies are screaming? Yep, and they keep, like, converging almost like, you know, but it's like they almost appear out of nowhere. Mm. That's really creepy, the fact that she's... She thinks one of the skeletons in the... It's not. It's a skeleton. Yeah, uh, but there is one that's better looking than the rest of them, and they use it a couple of times. So... It falls on her, but then it's also the one that has the, the snake, snake coming out of it. That shot's really creepy. Uh, but they get out. Mm-hmm. Uh, Indy saves Marion from all the skellies, and uh, they manage to knock a block out and uh, find their way out of the well of cells. You know, when they knock cells. the block, he pushes the block out, you can see the shadow of it bounce. Because obviously it's a really light block for him to be able to move it. It's one of the same ones that Marion was bonking on the head of people. And yeah, stuff. It's fine. that's just it. Painted it. But it's just so funny. The shadow just goes... Boing. <laughs> Classic. Very, very good. Um, um, so yeah. he sees a plane and he figures they're going to load up the Ark on that. So we should commandeer it first so that when they load the Ark, we'll just fly away. Yeah, we'll get the Ark in a movie. That's Piece fine. of cake. Uh, not quite. Not not quite, no. Uh, this sequence is rad. What a fight scene. So good. I love how he takes out one guy with ease and he's like, yes, I've done it. I'm going to do the same thing for this guy who is like watching everything sort of take part from like his camp. He's like, oh, I've been looking for a fight. Shirt off. Takes like, the he, shirt off. He's so a very good. bulky guy. So this is um, played by a British actor called Pat Roach, mm-hmm. um, who was a British boxer and also did some pro wrestling, I think, at one stage. Yeah, as well. right. Um, and plays like a number of characters in the Indiana Jones uh, saga. He plays a Sherpa who's in the bar fight earlier on in the film, uh, plays the massive uh, guard um, who Indy fights and, uh, spoiler alert, uh, defeats by putting him in a rock crusher in the Temple of Doom mm-hmm. down in the mine. And then he plays a Gestapo officer in Last Crusade. So so good. There you go, Paddy Roach. And very quickly, like, physically overwhelms Indy more than any other character has. But we get another one of those moments where when Indy turns around and sees him, he goes, oh, like, haven't I done enough? Got to do a big fight with, like, a big, bo- a big, big, Big guy, a know. big, big, <laughs> big guy, a big boxer guy, and it's not just him. There's the pilots also shooting at him until Marion takes him out with the woodchucks. True, yeah, um, but just such a good fight. There is that one punch where Indy turns the wrong way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just goes the wrong angle. <laughs> so that's funny. how I'll good put, the punch I'll was. I'll put the clip in. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> whoa. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha 
<laughs> that's, a, that's how good the punch is. It was. It, it makes was you really change good. direction. Yeah, it was like, it's the equivalent to me like, <laughs> afterwards. So good. <laughs> so, so good. But yeah, um, but yeah like it, he gets overwhelmed in this fight. Like he's mm. pretty bloodied up and he's like, his nose is broken at a few different stages. He's like, yeah, pretty banged up. But then like things sort of increase because Marion's like trying to get on the gunner She's and gunning all down. the Nazis down. But unfortunately, hit some gas tanks. And when we're getting like a leak and gas going towards the plane uh, and there's potentially some fire around so stakes are up because the plane keeps just doing a big old circle. Because mm, she's taking the wood chocks. Correct. And it's just just doing spinnies. Spinnies. And uh, the propellers basically cut old Pat Roach up and he, he, he did. Yeah. It's pretty rad. With the blood splatter on the swash sticker as well. Yeah. I do wonder too like how this sequence is done. Like obviously there's some great stunt work in this. I don't know much about this sequence specifically but mm. there are a lot of times where Harrison Ford looks like he is getting very close to real propellers. Yeah. Like uh, it, it, it seems like a bit of a dangerous set. Well and also like the the first guy that he fights has he a wrench. They caught up and in it, there. Like, gets caught in a propeller and it's like i don't think you could fake that that probably actually happened like maybe the wrench is made of something like polystyrene or something that'll just break away yeah but still you're putting your hand very close to that propeller asking your stunt guys to do a lot yeah but just an awesome sequence the plane goes kaboom because of the gas leak kablamo yeah they and get away and realize well I guess the arc's not going on that plane. Oh, yeah, but then, uh, well, they re they rendezvous with uh, Sulla, mm -hmm. uh, who is uh, very happy uh, that neither character are dead. Uh, Even though he had already pretty, moved on. Twice. <laughs> uh, twice. And uh, they're like, oh, well, they're going to load the arc onto a truck, truck now. And for again, Cairo. And he's, and he's like, like truck, oh. what truck? Again. Good music shift as well with this one. Very good. Um, and then Indy's trying to work out. It's like, okay, well, I want you guys to try to organize some transport to get us to England. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go on after that truck. He's like, what are you going to do? I I'm, don't know. I'm, I'm making this up as I go along. And he steals somebody's horse. He sure does. Poor Mario. Um, <laughs> awesome. Awesome scene. So The truck chase. One of the things I love so much about this movie and loved when I was a kid as well yep. that I don't feel like you get as much in any of the sequels mm. maybe a little bit in the last crusade but this one in particular feels like it just keeps adding stuff on yeah like it like has about five higher. scenes where it's like this could be the end of the movie like they've got the arc it's done oh no they got caught all right now they're gonna get the plane oh no now there's a truck sequence and then after the truck sequence it's like now they're going on the submarine and now there's the, like it just keeps going over and over again and i loved that as a kid because i didn't want it to end so when no. one exciting sequence ends and you're like yeah but now we get the next exciting sequence right. it was it was really awesome and um yeah when we start to look at some of the other uh entries in the franchise that's an area where i think um they do get let down a little bit yeah this film is very much like all killer no filler where there's it. in other films it's too much filler, not enough killer. So, yeah, uh, which is a, a common thing, unfortunately, with some of the sequels. But speaking of killer, speaking of killer, he, he kills a lot of people in this scene. He does. Well, he uh, jumps from the horse to the truck, fights his way on. Uh, one goes, by one, starts taking people out. Just in takeover mode. Will Elm screams yeah. everywhere. Ah! One of my favorite bits after he's worked his way to the front seat is when they drive through the scaffolding. I know exactly what you're going to say. And the bloke falls, falls down. And he's like, <laughs> and he's like ah! but the way he just pauses there, and then he almost looks like he throws himself off, off the, the truck. truck. He's like, this is too much crazy. <laughs> it's not just your favorite scene though, because it cuts back to Indy and the guy that he's fighting, and they're like, ah. <laughs> so good so so good um but yeah he's just he's just taking people out one by one and then he's um, just yeah like knocking people out and he's having a great time doing it as well big old smile on his face ah <laughs> you're dead ah <laughs> you're dead so in this sequence at one point he knocks a car off a cliff mm. and this was done in the original film using miniatures and then when the film was shown on television they actually redid just this one shot with a real using car? CGI. Oh, okay. And then that was never in any media release. Not on the VHS, just not on, on the DVDs, not on the Blu-ray. Just on TV. So that's the one on ClickView? Yes, where ClickView records yeah. all of this from. TV. So I had a weird 
CGI moment oh. in this. And I was like, oh, that looks That's weird. so strange. Yeah. Because, and it, it really does feel like those CGI moments in Star Wars. Special edition. They, they just like really disconnect you from the world. Mm, interesting. Um, okay. And yeah, so I looked it up on YouTube afterwards looking at the original clip and the other one. And it adds nothing. Absolutely nothing. Like the original with the miniatures looked great. Keep I that. Well, they did. It was a very <laughs> just fleeting the broadcast version. Just, it was fine. Um, yeah, but it's it's so, so good. His faces during it, the grunts and stuff that he's making. Very visceral. Um, and I love the shot where uh, he kicks the guy through the door, but he also gets shot and like the blood splatter. Oh, and he's like kicking the door. It's like everything is happening all at once. Interesting with that. You end up using like, like a red pepper and stuff to have that same effect the problem was is like that's i just started making everyone start coughing essentially yeah and well, i was like i can well, understand that, that. It'll, it'll do it um but yeah it's like so the he's kind of knocking out everyone on the vehicles and then eventually it's like well soldiers that are still on the track is like we're going to take this over <laughs> and then you've got this guy like one in particular who's just hanging around who's a tough sob the last one yeah oh, he's and he, rad he's great and then like um he's got a bit of paul hogan about it that's what i thought when i was watching it i'm glad i'm not crazy that's good you are but i am too so that's fine that's great um yeah so paul hogan tries to take the truck back uh old crocodile dundee himself uh he's hanging onto the door shoots indy in the uh I'm not, no he doesn't shoot indy no, in the, i'm sorry but he makes his way into the driver's cabin and he but realizes then, smartly, that's a real, weak spot imagine that like a smart villain in like a movie oh, crazy it. Um, but yeah, and then just like hammers in on the wound and it yeah. clearly shows how like uncomfortable and much how much pain Indy's in, which is great. Uh, and then so Indy ends up outside of the truck, basically throws, throws him through the window. Away. And the, like the hood ornament mm-hmm. coming back. Um, um, this is a such a cool stunt. So yeah. something that you'll be very familiar with from the old bonus features. The stunt man actually did go under the truck, but... Because it was so shallow between mm. the truck and the ground, they actually had to dig out a channel in the dirt and the truck had to drive perfectly straight over the channel so, so that the stunt driver could fit in that gap underneath. And you can see it, like it's only one shot of the film. You can see it, but if you didn't know, you wouldn't. You wouldn't know um, what to look for, yeah. But yeah, I'll, I'll absolutely layer it in because it's, it's really cool. And just to think like, yep, they did that stunt for real. Rad. Real stuff is good. Very, very good. Uh, but yeah. Maybe. He comes back, and despite Balok's warnings, Paul Hogan doesn't know. Hogs, no! And, he, and Indy goes, you call that a kick? This is a kick. And you're gone. And he is gone. Um, and I like that he like gets crumpled under it, and you ah! see his legs. Like, <laughs> yeah. He's got the arc, and they speed off, and yeah, they end up at the docks. Tyler organizes a transport. Oh, but when the Nazis are, are pissed off, you know how they show their frustration? Pick oh. up a watermelon oh, and yeah, that's smash right. it on the it, ground. Dietrich gets the watermelon and just throws it on the ground with ferocity. And everyone's oh. like, hey! <laughs> It's a good time. So, so good. Yeah, but yeah. Um, so, yeah, but yeah they're trying to get the, uh, the arc away and it looks like they're going to do so. They've got a uh, Katanga. How cool is Katanga? Just chilling with like the white sweater and just lighting a cigar. Smoothest son bitch in the world. Um, so so good. Mm. Um, so they leave leave Salah, um, and I love this scene on the ship between them. Where um, so well, first of all, she smacks him in the face with the mirror, and he screams so loud that you can hear it from the outside of the ship. Ah! But then it cuts back, and she goes, "What'd you say?" I was like, "What?" What is that? <laughs> Just playing it for laughs. It's like, did she deliberately <laughs> hear? Ah! What'd you say? <laughs> What'd you say? Then she like tries to put some rubbing alcohol. It reminds me of that scene in Dead Men Don't Wear Plaid. <laughs> Get back! Get back! Oh no, that's okay. Just no, a no they're alcohol. fine. They're fine. Just a little really, alcohol. they don't hurt at all. It doesn't hurt. Don't be a baby. Get, Get back! <laughs> It hurts. And she's like, God damn it, Indy, where doesn't it hurt? Here. <laughs> Just touches his elbow. So weird. Like, I, no, I love it. He's like Let's a little kid. It's Here. so good. Hmm. Bit of a role reversal, him acting like the kid. We. Oh, oh. oh controversial well, humor. Well, as, as he does say, it's not the years, it's the mileage. So. He does say that. And uh, that was an improvised line. Classic Harrison Ford. 
Yeah, because he's amazing wits. You don't know what you're talking about. Doesn't matter. He won't be watching this. No, he's, too much he's, Harry. He saw the title. Yeah, <laughs> he switched off. Um, but that's fine. But yeah, so he sets up and builds up to. They have a bit of an old smooch, and uh, mm-hmm. you know, have, it looks like everything's fine. Uh, they cut to the Ark having the Nazi symbol burned off, Ooh, yeah. which is looking a little bit spooky. Uh, um, but unfortunately, the Nazis find them. Na- the U boat has arrived. They have a little found. Nazi party. They do. It's uh, not 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 the great party, no. um, but they come aboard the boat. Indy quickly uh, goes off. Uh, he's, he's really good at that, letting Marion get captured while he goes. And <laughs> yeah, hides. no, he's like, oh damn, she's captured. Oh well. Uh, I, I like that Katanga tries to save her. Yeah, this is he, like he's oh, like, I'm like oh well, you've got the ark. Come on, like I'll leave keep her, her as and... like a trade or whatever and stuff yeah. like that. And Belloc's like, well, no, no, you won't. I love her. I love her. <laughs> she looks good in the dress. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then Indy's just like hiding in the smokestack, which mm. is just great. But they don't know where he is. Even even after the Nazis have left, Katanga's like, where's Indy gone? There. <laughs> there he is. I <laughs> see da, 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 da. him. So good. And what a what a trek you would have had to make. That's a hell of a swim. He swam that and didn't get spotted by any Nazis along the way. I know. It's Imagine just if like... he'd climbed up on the periscope and someone looks through the... Na- the... Oh, like in Last Crusade. Doing the Last Crusade. <laughs> and right. the guy's like, he's like this. And then smiles and again and goes like, back in. He's like... <laughs> <laughs> so sassy Nazis. So sassy Nazis. Sassy Nazis. Uh, but yeah, um, so... While we're talking Indy on the submarine, hotly contested over time. Like, how did Indy stay on the submarine when it submerged? But this model of submarine was actually known for staying on a surface level for quite a lot of the journey and only actually diving... On necessity. Okay. Um, so, nice. yeah, the assumption is that it just kind of stayed and he it's could just like sit just on top. And stuff. Yeah. That makes sense then. Um, Indy swaps out his khakis for a Nazi uniform. It's a bit snug the first so, time. I, and that's a great gag. He's like, <laughs> I used to do this one at, at home as well. I was like, oh, it doesn't fit. And then I would like kick a pillow and get the hat to fly out. It just so, defies all laws of gravity. Really does. Kicks a guy and the guy must be like, <laughs> <laughs> just throws his hat up too. So then, then they start marching towards uh, the tabernacle. Indy has slipped behind them. He gets his hands on a rocket launcher. He's got a, he's got a good old goes, RPG. Hello? <laughs> Anybody home? Think, <laughs> McFly. <laughs> think. <laughs> Not going to do anything with a bloody rocket uh, in your face. But yeah, I, this is a cool like threat. Or like, oh, your Fuhrer off. has no prize. Like He's just so... The gravitas in his voice is... And the Nazis uh, want to get involved, but Belloc's like, no, I got uh, this. Like, salute! Ah! Salute! Um, yeah, but basically he's, he's like, you can have the Ark. I t- just give me the girl. All I want is the girl. But nah. Belloc's no still like, no. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's, like, he's really affectionate with Marion. He'd be like, Indy's like, you can have the Ark. I just want her to take, like, I want to go home with Marion. And, like, and he's like, love okay, it. blow it up. Blow us all back to God. Yeah, so he... He calls he, his bluff. He calls his bluff because he, he knows that Indy is just as curious about the Ark as he is and mm. also he wouldn't want to see harm come to it. Yeah, so, he's like, uh, you, know, you know, Jones, uh, we're passing through history. This is history. And it really preys on, like, Indy's, as you said, own pursuit of, you know, uh, discovering something and being a part of... It's, know, it's a really good speech. Um, and the other line that he says here that I really love Mm. He's like, uh, your persistence surprises even me. You're going to give mercenaries a bad name. <laughs> Classic Bella. Um, and then his speech is so good that Indy's he decides like... to celebrate by eating a fly. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about this. <laughs> All right. So during this sequence, a fly lands on Paul Friedman's face and kind of crawls into his mouth. <laughs> now, everybody has just claimed that, oh my God, he ate the fly. Like he was so committed to his character. He's cooking. He just, he just <laughs> eats it during, cooking. during his spiel. What actually happened was the frame rate that they were filming the sequence at was just not quick enough to be able to capture the moment <laughs> where the fly flies away. And so it just disappears. It looks like he has swallowed it. And... It works really well because it just makes him seem far more sinister. Like, oh, he's eating flies. Jeez, Louise. Yikes. Don't mess with this guy. Yeah. He's French. Only thing scarier than a Nazi is a Frenchman that eats flies. 
<laughs> one of Belloc's uh, classic personality traits is Indy's like, oh, he's done it again. He's Not done another it. Fly. He's done it. <laughs> I was so excited. My voice was so high. But no, yes, no, no, it, is, it is merely a mistake, but people still ask Paul Freeman about it today. Hilarious. Amazing. Um, so, so good. But clearly, whether it was the fly or the speech, mm -hmm. uh, it's effective enough for Indy to really like this big sort of look of, damn, he's got me across his face. And like really like this feeling of resignation, I guess, mm -hmm. puts the RPG down, lets himself get captured and lets the last part of the movie happen. So Yeah, thank God, because it's a good part. Yeah. It's less good on ClickView, but we'll get to that. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> so Marion and Indy are all tied up and the Nazis basically do a ritual where they open up the Ark. And, and they're filming everything as well. They are filming everything as well. And it's it's really cool. Like it's oh, yeah. It's just like dust because obviously the tablets have disintegrated over time. Um, and they're all really disappointed at Dietrich first. Dietrich is just like... <laughs> yeah. But then... Warm, warm, we get this kind of pulsing sound. Score and change. Smoke and music. really creepy... Um, it, eerie, but not yet, like, terrifying. No, that comes up. Because it seems like they're just, like, these nice kind of spirits it's, or angels even. It's quite from... fantastical. And, yeah, <clears throat> I, I like the way they did this as well. The fact that they... So, to get, like, these spirits, what they... I think they did is... Um, film like mannequins like underwater and that's cool. and then put like a few filters over it and stuff to give it this sort of ethereal kind of vibe so yeah. very nice very one stevie cool. um but yeah and then one of the angel type creatures goes right up to old uh old toad and it's just like dun, dun, dun. and it's like dun, 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 dun. <laughs> psycho thing uh, basically. yeah and, it, and the face warps and changes and uh toad's toad like ah the Jeez, scream boy. is so high <laughs> That was a loud one. <laughs> scared me. But that's what it sounds like. <sighs> Incredibly accurate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to lose my voice for this. Yeah, I know. Um, it's going hard, but sir. Yeah, very, very cool. Indy is like, Marion, shut your eyes. Um, so refusing to look at it is their saving grace. Yeah, because like, there's so much happening. Cause, like, so much. Belloc's like, face starts glowing and then he's shooting like lasers out of his eyes that is like absolutely nailing I, all the Nazis. I, I love it. Like the lasers all come down and like electricity goes through their body and they're like this. Yeah. And then their eyes just like burn out the front of their face. That's like, cool. It's rad. It's It kind of looks like in Ghostbusters when they're on the yeah. statues and they're like, That's and then they turn dog. into the demon dogs. <laughs> and then in ClickView, it skips and the fire all goes up in the air and oh. it comes down. And I was like, what is this? That's I a, was outraged. I mean, to be fair, of all things to probably cut out, this it's would be up the one. There because then yeah. you get, yeah, Belloc's head explodes mm -hmm. and he's like screaming as well. And then you've got probably some of the most memorable visuals from this film, from mm -hmm. the Indiana Jones saga, really from any film, particularly as five year old Nick watching this, being like, what the heck, heck? is going on? Well, you know this version, I wish this was around when I was a kid because all the parts that are omitted from this are the parts that my mum made me close my eyes when we were watching it. <laughs> so a lot of this stuff I saw way, way later. Like I, I would have seen the movie like 10 times before I saw this scene. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, okay. and my dad used to be like, no, no, don't. Don't close your eyes just yet. He wanted me to see as much of it as and I could before that shut moment. Um, yeah, so we get the face melt. Yes, so there's well, there's two great effects, as you said. Balox is just like a head explodes, just like a mannequin that just goes. Um, cool. But cool. then we've got like the the main soldier whose head just like crumples in on itself. Yeah, and, that's yeah, Dietrich. Yeah. Yeah, and so basically how they did that was they made a mold of his head that was hollow. And it was just filled with air. And then they just sucked the air out of it. And it looks rad. It so looks good. so, so good. But not as good as uh, old Toadie's death. Oh, because, man. And, yeah, the way <laughs> they do this is they get um, so another fake head. And mm -hmm. then they put it between two propane heaters. And then apparently, so this uh, Chris Wallace, who's from uh, Industrial Light and Magic, yep. um, aims like a handheld heat gun from underneath mm -hmm. and moves it as necessary to help basically like the melting process happen. Yeah, so it's several layers of gelatin in different colors so that instead of it just like his whole face melting, it like the skin disappears first. Yeah. Then you've got like veins and like bits of red and, and then the there's the skeleton underneath with the eyes falling out. 
Um, and so, yeah, they had to do it in sections and let it dry so that each one would melt separately. Yep. Um, and, yeah, it was a 10-minute melt that they then sped up to be about a three-second shot. It's incredible. Like, one so of the good. coolest things, like, I've ever seen. Like, again, probably one of the things, like, a, a horror movie fan as a younger person was like, that's terrifying, but also looked real cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's... Um, yeah, and then it's uh, the spirits are basically it's almost like fire going around mm. Indian Marion, and it's like shut your eyes, and, and then goes like up into the goes sky. Goes up in the sky, and then the arc closes, and we're done. They they survive and they survive. Um, Their ropes are burnt, so they can they can get on out of there. Very convenient. Fortunately, uh, they both know how to man a submarine. Just the two of them. Of course they do. So back home they go. Yep, and uh, basically the um, they have a bit of a meeting. Army have taken possession of the Ark. Yes. Don't worry, we'll see it in 2009, so that's okay. We sure will. Um, um, but I like that Indy's a little bit pissed off. He's like, you need to have people studying this. It's really dangerous. And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got top men working on it. Oh, yeah, who? Top, top men. men. But at least he has Marion. They're going to go on a little little date. At least for, they'll, they'll be together for a while. Sort of on and off. Yeah, mostly off. <laughs> yep. um, but yeah, as you said, the the final shot where the arc's being kind of steered away into uh, what we find out is uh, Area 51. Yeah, right, Roswell, yeah. I love that shot. It's it's obviously like a matte painting to make it look like the warehouse goes on forever. Looks great, But though. it's just, it's such a cool idea that the government has all of these different secrets that they're just locking away. One of the greatest movies of all time. Yeah, right. Top, top four for me. Yeah, I, I think like upon another rewatch, I was like, yeah, I probably forget how highly this ranks um, as a movie for me. Very important one as well. Like again, like another movie that was shown to me by my mom, um, sort of really early days as well as a kid, like this in the early Star Wars. So I have like a, just a really fond memory for uh, these times, sort of like sitting on the couch uh, with my family watching these movies. And again, probably, you know, some scenes and parts of the film that were maybe like a little bit too old for me at the time but i don't really care i was just having the best time watching this film and just yeah that's the best i love raiders so yeah it's really really good um a couple of fun little details that didn't really have a place to mention okay you know in the third film um where sal is like you were named after the dog <laughs> did you know that george lucas's dog was named indiana i did that's so cool like i love that um You're like a big happy family yeah exactly well, sort of yeah, yeah, just George Lucas and Harrison Ford. And Steven Spielberg. That's it. That's it. <laughs> and the dog. Um, so let's talk about some of the alternate castings that were considered. Tommy Tom. Um, yeah, well, because originally George Lucas didn't want Ford for the role because he'd already worked with him in American Graffiti and Star Wars. And he didn't want it to seem like, oh, I'm always going to be working with the same people. I'm a little bit like uh, Scorsese working with De Niro. Uh, Rob Robbie D. Um, and this guy, Scorsese. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so some of the casts, like obviously you mentioned Tom Selleck and we'll talk about that. Some of the casts that came up, they were all like Saturday Night Live type people. Like you got totally. Steve Martin, Bill Murray, Chevy Chase, Jack Nicholson, Mark mm. Harmon, uh, Michael Bean was considered. I could say that. Um, Don Johnson and David Hasselhoff. I'm really glad they went with Harrison Ford. Yeah, yeah. Um, but Tom Selleck was actually cast in the role yeah. and then ended up having to drop out because of Magnum P.I. And he is still pissed about it. He's oh, like, well. I made a mistake. You did. You did. You made a big old mistake. But I am so glad Harrison Ford is in this. He is just iconic in the role. Yeah, just, yeah, just, yeah, the, the character's perfect. And, I, yeah, it's hard to imagine sort of um, someone else uh, donning the fedora. Mm. Um, one last thing I want to mention before we move on to weekly watches. Yes. Have you heard of Raiders, the story of the greatest fan film ever made? No, I have not. So it is a documentary about a group of kids who tried to recreate Raiders shot for shot. Wow. It's incredible. It used to be on Netflix. It's not anymore. But during COVID. Oh, I remember you talking about this. Yeah, yeah Maddie and I stumbled upon it and watched it and absolutely loved it like i was engrossed and as someone who like was these kids watching yeah. uh raiders when i was younger i was like yeah i totally would have done this and they would ask for like christmas gifts to be props from the movie wow um yeah like the the dedication was incredible and they did it like back-to-back -back summers for like 10 years 
So their age changes as they're making the movie, Incredible. but they're yeah they're trying to make it like as close to uh, shot for shot as possible and did really dangerous stuff like lit people on fire. Um, and the only scene they never got was the fight with the plane, the propeller scene. Oh, okay. And so in this documentary, while they're talking about it and going back, they reunite the kids and make that film. final scene. That's awesome. You you would love it. I, yeah, I really, really, really enjoyed it. Um, I don't know where you can see it now. But, I'll find it. Um, yeah, really good. Um, cool. So that was it. Uh, big, big thank you again to... Oh, who suggested Zoe. it, actually? Oh, Zoe. You've thanks, Zoe. Some, you have had some absolute winners, Zoe. Um, but also a huge thanks again to Zachary as well for the intro for today. Major thanks. That's cool. been Raiders. Let's move on to Quickly Watch. Weekly, 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 weekly watches. Weekly, 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 weekly watches. Now, I introduced it as Weekly Watch today because I have but one thing that I'm going to be talking about. How many you got on the docket? Uh, I'm going to talk about one of the other, the, uh, the part of what you're talking about plus one other. Oh, come on. I've only got one and you're already stealing it off me. No. All right. Let's kick things <laughs> off with different that parts then. of it. Let's fine. Let's talk about it. We're going to talk Cobra Kai. <laughs> so I started. What's the song? Do you remember that moment? No. The dude in the car dealership that's having the boba tea just goes, what's the sa? It's been a few seasons. I'll put it in here. <laughs> Whoa, did you hear that, everybody? We got a two-time karate champ over here. I guess I should be worried. What's the sa? <laughs> <laughs> I started Cobra Kai on the weekend. Maddie's sister introduced it to me. And okay. She's like, you're going to love it. You're going to love it. I've seen the first two Karate Kid movies. I've unfortunately seen the remake with Jaden Smith. Um, but I haven't even seen, is there three? Yeah, I haven't seen the third one. And three or four, actually. Maybe, yeah. Uh, who knows? We don't know. For sure. I haven't returned to them in a long, long, long time. And so I, this was never something that really appealed to me. As soon as I started watching it, I was hooked. And now I want to go back and watch the movies because I suspect there's going to be more and more elements from the films that are roped in. Can confirm. Um, so, yeah, I, I should go and, and check that out. But I've now seen the just over the first two seasons, finished it over the weekend. It's so watchable. Yeah. Like, you can just absolutely obliterate through it. Obviously, I'll, I'll talk to you a little bit about Cobra Kai before. Um, I'm currently uh, I'm up to date. I'm, uh, I've watched part one of uh, season six. It's pretty crazy just how they're <laughs> smashing through. Mm. Um, but I'm really enjoying uh, the new episodes. I don't like how they're basically segmenting this over, I think, 18 months almost. Ooh. So, yeah, there's only been like the five episodes from season six now. And I just, just want some more. Um, some but more. I'm, I'm really glad you're enjoying it, though. I am. I'm really enjoying it. I love, I, I think the action sequences are really, really compelling. But also the characters are just so lovable. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't say that... Uh, that John Ralphio, I mean, John Ralphio. <laughs> I said this to Maddie the other day. I daggered you on the dance floor. Just bounce, 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 bounce. bounce. Now all the ladies say it. Bounce, 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 bounce. Now, I wouldn't say that Ralph Macchio is the most amazing actor, but it really works for the kind of show that it is because it's, it's a such bit, a silly show. It's a bit cheesy. Um, it's like it feels like it's still like a little bit 80s. Yeah, like I think Billy Zabka is also really silly in it, but... Just slightly better performance. I, I agree. Um, I, 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 you end up hating like uh, Daniel LaRusso yeah. for most of this yeah. series. Um, but it's just, they're really good. The chemistry between them is fun. The kids are great yep. in it. Really um, there's so many fun characters that come in and out. I love uh, LaRusso's wife. She is incredible. She's just Amanda, yeah. hitting him with hard truths. Yep. Um, one thing that um, you'll get to enjoy over the series is her relationship and rapport with Johnny. Okay, right. And it's some of the best parts of the show. Okay, awesome. And they're really good. Um, but yeah, I the other thing that I really like is that even though it is set in a modern time, it still feels like the 80s. And is it like, like a the fast times or something? The like, yeah. uh, outfits that they wear, just everything feels like it's still from the original Karate Kid kind yeah. of setting. Yep. Um, yeah, just really good. I, yeah. I, I, I don't have a bad thing to say about it. I'm excited to 
finish this podcast, go home and watch some more. Yep, a couple more seasons tonight. That's, That's it. Fine. The first film that I got around to watching was a film called Stoker. Um, so 2013, directed by uh, Park Chan wook uh, who's best known for directing Old Boy, uh, a film that I haven't got around to seeing, unfortunately, yet, but I do want to because I know it's supposed to be really good. Mm. Um, it's got Mia uh, Wasikowska, Nicole Kidman, and Matthew Good, plus a, a little bit of Dermot Mulroney and Jackie Weaver uh, in the mix. Tell me, is this Dylan McDermott or Dermot Mulroney? Um, so this film's like a bit of a thriller, gothic sort of vibe. Um, I think the film looks really cool. Um, it's just like really well shot. Some really great transitions in there as well. Um, it's very unsettling and unnerving. Uh, Matthew Good particularly is very, very good. good. Yeah. Uh, in, in, they, don't, they don't call him that for nothing. They don't call him Matthew Bad. Uh, <laughs> I think I gave this three and a half or four on my letterbox. Um, but yeah, it was an enjoyable watch. I think like um, given the fact that it's a pretty limited cast and the interplay between um, all of the, the three main characters is really good. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, just like a good sort of unsettling thriller um, right throughout. So yeah, didn't mind it. Talk about this one. Okay. Well, we've already talked about Steven Spielberg or enough today, but I'm going to talk about it a little bit more. So I finally got around to watching Jaws. So good. Yeah. Uh, and obviously this is a you know really iconic film. He's on the poster there just behind Mr. Uh, Brown, not the shark himself, um, but you know the fact that they know, uh, note him as the one of the creators of Jaws, the, uh, the first summer blockbuster, and um, perpetually my summer blockbuster. Yeah, I, said, I watch it yearly over the Christmas break. When you're at the usually beach, usually when I'm at the beach. Yeah. yeah, just when you thought it was safe to go on the water. Uh, but yeah, no, just a really awesome film. I mean, I like shark movies. We've talked about a few shark movies on the podcast before. Deep Blue Sea. Deep Blue Sea. We Deeper, love it. Bluer. My head and is like a sea shark's fear. <laughs> Shout out to Ella Cool J. Some really bad shark movies as well. Like, the, the, was it the Black Demon or whatever you watched recently? Yeah. That was pretty bad. This, like, when shark movies work and films like this, creature features in general, when they work and then when they're really good is when you have a connection to the characters. And you do. Mm-hmm. Um, all the performances are really good. Um, Favorite part with the characters? When they're singing. Show me the way to go home. <laughs> bum, bum, I'm tired and I want to go to bed. So good. Uh, geez, you're having too much fun there. I am, I am. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, then they start to get ram raided again by old Jawsy. Um, That's what they call him, old Jawsy. Old Jawsy. Um, but yeah, I just really love this film. I think the way it builds tension um, throughout, the use of the score, uh, the fact that, again, the, the classic sort of horror movie trope of not revealing your antagonist. Um, until a little bit later in the film, I think yeah. it's really good. When you come down here, try to chum some of this shit. That, good reveal. And he does. <laughs> he does go. Um, but yeah, I, I can see why this film is renowned as a classic. I think it still holds up really well. Like I, sometimes I watch my old movies. I'm like, oh, it's pretty good for the time. This is just really good. Yeah. So yeah, this is really Jaws. good in any time. Facts. Alrighty. Shall we? Shall we move on to rival? Wasasa <laughs> rankings. <laughs> Rival Wasasas indeed. Got a long list to reorder. We might agree in ways. Cause we're gonna rank things, baby. Based on our face. Let's not mess around. We're doing rival rankings, five on five. One of us will have a better rating than the other one. And it's gonna be me. <laughs> Don't listen to him, folks. I'm gonna kick things off. With Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Okay. The latest indie. Now, I should put a disclaimer in. I've only seen it the once. Saw it at the movies. I have not done a rewatch yet. And I would like to do a rewatch because I guess part of the problem with films that are coming out now that are like sequels or legacy sequels, whatever you want to call them, is you can't help but have expectations that you want to be met about those films. And if they don't get met, that can have a level of disappointment that Mm -hmm. is attached to it. And it doesn't necessarily mean the film is a bad film, but it just means you're going to be a little flat that it didn't do the thing you wanted it to do. That's fair, yeah. Um, And I'm not even sure I could tell you exactly what I wanted this film to do, but it just wasn't this. Okay. And so I think if I rewatched it now, knowing how it was going to turn out, I would probably look at it more favorably. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, at the time I was just like, it was okay. I just, it felt a little flat. And I think there was a couple of things in particular that really pulled me out of the film. 
Number one, the opening sequence. While I like the idea in theory of going back and doing a younger adventure with Indy, the effects were really distracting. And any moment, any still moment within that sequence looked incredible. But once you kind of piece all of that together and you start to see the movement, it's really hard to get past that. So still an incredible effort and a really, really impressive feat, but it pulled me out of the world, especially with the little PlayStation 2 cutscene where he's running along the top of the train. And you're like, that is not how a person moves. <laughs> it was really weird. Um, but it was cool to see a young Harrison Ford. Um, but the other thing was the complete opposite to that, the old Harrison Ford, and actually feeling that exhaustion in his character. And at times going, yep, this works for what they're going for. And he is supposed to be beaten down mm. and past it a little bit. But you also need those action-packed moments in an Indiana Jones film. And as I just said, for Raiders, that was the thing that I was like, yes, and then there's another action scene. And then there's another action scene. And I think that this film in particular has the most lackluster action in it. Um, debatable because of all the CGI from another film in the series. And we'll get to that. Um, but, yeah, I just... I, I felt like the ending didn't have like a big, amazing moment, like the time travel element, but there's not traps and things that they had to work their way through. There wasn't a final fight. It was just like, cool, they traveled through time and then they traveled back. Like it didn't feel like a big climactic finish, you know okay. what I mean? That's fair um, and so that was what kind of let it down for me. Okay, cool. So that's number five, Dial of Destiny. Uh, number five for me is the film before Dial of Destiny and that's Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Um, some of the reasons why I don't really love this film um, is that sometimes this, I don't know, I think like the story in terms of the stakes don't feel very high. Parts of the film, like with Ray Winston, you know, they try to make it a big deal that he's like turned on Indy and is like, oh, this is a character we've known for five minutes. I don't really care. Um, and then he like goes back and then he's yeah, like... Yeah, if he'd been on like multiple journeys with him, maybe yeah. he would have a bit more weight. And it's yeah. like, I don't really care. This, um... I will say one of my favorite parts of Indiana Jones are all the cold opens. Mm -hmm. uh, this cold open is fun. I really like them sort of going through the the warehouse. The Absolutely. fact that they accidentally undercover the Ark and stuff, everything. And I get like sci-fi elements and aliens play into the contextual settings of what's happening 50s, at the time. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, it just kind of feels like a bit of a disconnect for me at times. There's some good performances in here that sometimes get a little bit wasted. I think they could have done a little bit more with John Hurt. A bit more with Karen Allen coming back as well would have been great. And then you've got Mark Williams, who's uh, in, in the movie. Um, again, like maybe I'd look more favorably on this character if it was played by a different actor who's not, a you know, in more recent years, revealed himself to be a bit of a D-bag. Um, but at the same time, I was just like, the CGI stuff really knocks me out of things. It feels yeah very glossy as a mm -hmm. film and like too, too shiny, too clean. And yep. that sort of takes me out of it um, and what I probably like a little bit with Mangold's direction and what he, how that film looks anyway mm. is why I like it. But um, there's parts of this film I do enjoy. Um, I mean, I like Kate Blanchett, even though I don't love her. Blanchett! Blanchett! With the Russian accent! Yeah, um, I don't really like her in the role. Yeah, so <laughs> I think they could have gone elsewhere or maybe had to play, play a different character and stuff like that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, and then they have like the whole nuke in the fridge and all this sort of stuff. I don't yeah. know. It's just, it just gets a bit silly for me. And I don't like how silly it gets. Uh, and yeah, that's probably why I don't enjoy this film as much. Um, well, I'll, I'll piggyback off that because that's obviously what's in my number four position, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. And even as you were listing things, I was like, yeah, there are things that are pretty lackluster about this. Um, I would say what probably plays a role in this is the age that I was when it came out. Yep. So I was still probably more excited by, well, I mean, I was really excited for Dial of Destiny to come out. But as a kid, I was probably just like, yeah, an Indiana Jones movie. And I wasn't looking out for flaws in the film. Yeah, that's fair. The, yeah. the CGI is a really big bummer for me. Um, and even though it's not as present in Dial of Destiny, it's a bit of a bummer in that too. Like face replacements on horses and 
not on the horse itself, but on men riding horses. <laughs> Imagine what that'd be like. Yeah, right. Terrifying. Yikes. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> but, I did find the action more compelling, even if it was slathered with a, a CGI uh, coating. I did find some of the traps and working out um, puzzles and things like that to be a bit of fun mm-hmm. as well. I completely agree about the alien stuff. Both aliens and time travel for me felt a little too far removed from, I can buy this. And they it shouldn't. Like the wrath of God coming down and killing the Nazis mm-hmm. in Raiders is also a ridiculous idea. Obviously that's not gonna happen, but there was something about the first three films being rooted in religion, and not even the same religion, but religion in general. It's to be a faith-based thing, yeah. Yeah, exactly right. It felt a little more, as someone who was raised Catholic, it felt a little more accessible, and like, yep. yeah, mm-hmm. I, I could buy this. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, I, I both four and five for me, I'm not saying they're amazing films, um, but they're also, ranked at the bottom very close together. So okay. I could do a rewatch of Dial of Destiny and then flip them back around again. Um, but I just, in my mind, I'm like, I have more fond memories of watching Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Okay. I was excited to rewatch it again after I saw it. Um, and I mean, personal feelings towards Shia LaBeouf in general aside, I don't think he's as bad as the character that everyone else thinks everyone real really championed him being killed off in dial of destiny um, i wouldn't go that far but yeah but yeah i i was like oh I, like they've brought in a younger character he may not be the most likable character but as someone who's a fan of your guilty pleasure is the transformers series it's like he was the hot actor at the he time was, he was so like they were putting him in a bunch of things and so I was like, oh, cool, I like this guy in Transformers. Maybe he'll be good in this. Like, I, I didn't find him nearly as irritating as everyone else seemed to. No, he doesn't like completely wreck the movie for me. That's not like yeah, what I'm saying. But yeah, my next one is Dollar Destiny. Mm-hmm. Um, I rewatched it last night as well. So I go. wanted to sort of just refresh the movie because I hadn't seen it as well since the cinemas. And again, sort of removing that anticipation from it mm-hmm. about what I was hoping to see, particularly the fact that, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I just, I, it felt like, and maybe part of me again sort of with how like the rest of the saga is and stuff i like the fact that this is the end of indiana jones rather than kingdom of crystal skull yeah um it feels like a more fitting end to the character i feel like harrison ford is really good in this movie like i feel like he's having he seems more engaged doing this film than kingdom of crystal skull i don't know with his acting performance i don't know like yeah he'd be the only one who can answer that question but um yeah i the the de-aging and stuff at the start can be a little bit janky and throw me a little bit, but the whole setting and everything I do enjoy, the being sort of placed back in World War II, particularly at the back end. Um, Indie films are better when Nazis are there. And this is one of my big things, <laughs> like legit. And it's the constant sort of like antagonists. And like, despite the fact that, you know, Nazis, I hate these guys as, you know, this thing but for Indie. Um, it just ties everything together, I mm-hmm. think. Um, and I really like Mads Mikkelsen and the role he plays. Um, as much as like Indy feels out of time, uh, Schmidt feels out of time as well. I mm-hmm. like the fact that those two are going against each other in a world where things are changing, where Indy's struggling to sort of move forward. How is his wants face to go back. not destroyed by that train? I have no idea. <laughs> not even a scratch. I really like the, the chase scene in Tangier. I think that's really fun. Um, the diving scene looks really cool later. And just how this film looks, I think, in general, I really like Mangold's direction and sort of what they, the look of this film compared to Crystal Skull. Um, the time travel stuff, I think I was audibly like, what the hell's going on here? <laughs> um, plus, I also really wanted him to actually stay behind. I think it would have been actually a Ooh, good okay. way to finish the film. I know that, I don't know, that not everyone feels the same about that. But yeah, I feel like Harrison Ford's at like his best in this movie. Um, the side characters are pretty good. Um, obviously, there's you know been a lot made about uh, Phoebe Waller Bridges um, and what initially what her role was going to be and what the end product was. Mm-hmm. So I thought she must have been like related to Marcus or something like that. But I yeah. would have preferred that. Yeah, but um, no, I have a I had a good time watching this, and again, really enjoyed it on the rewatch probably more than yeah maybe I did in the first time watching this. Series. Yeah, nice. Okay. Um, in number three, and where I'm 
really hoping we align for our final three because I feel like this is a pretty like stock standard ranking from here on out for me. Yep. I have Temple of Doom. So do I. Three. Great. So those, those spooky bugs. Um, Temple of Doom for me has always, like even when it was just a trilogy, Temple of Doom was always the inferior one. Like I, I loved one and I loved three. Um, Temple of Doom, it it feels a little uh, heavier, uh, perhaps because Lucas and Spielberg were going through a divorce at various points in production <laughs> during it. So they were just like aggressive and angry um but the i didn't connect as much with the the voodoo style as i did with some of the the like the world war ii setting and yep. the religious undertones obviously knowing more of those historical elements it felt like i could connect to the other texts more yep um but that's not to say this isn't still a really enjoyable watch yep. i like that it's different um, I think the opening sequence is really, really fun. I enjoy it. Oh, Club Obi Wan. Yeah, I really love Short Round. Okie dokie, Doctor Joe's horny of potatoes. He's the best. He's so good. I'm, I'm disappointed that he hasn't made a return. I really thought he in might Dial. make an appearance in Dial of Destiny, but there's a pretty glaring aspect of this film that weighs it down for me. Quite a loud aspect too. Yeah, and what do you think that might be, Mister Blue? That's uh, Willie Scott. Willie Scott. Played by Kate Capshaw. Yikes. I hate the water! And I hate being wet! And I hate you! What's with that deep voice part? <laughs> I don't know. It's so She strange. was trying something and it didn't work. No. Um, they should have gone for another take. I mean, they could have gone for another actress. Yeah. Um, just a whole other performance. So obviously, yeah, she was uh, at the time or as a result of this film or whatever it was. I think at the time time like, they were seeing each other but i think spielberg's first wife had divorced him i heard he was he and lucas were going through a divorce during this that's why it feels more vicious and ang angry and stuff yeah i mean there's parts of this film that i do enjoy i like the fact that we get the fact that it's a prequel which i didn't know for a while you uh, were like where's marion kind of yeah. yeah who's this girl um and then but the way that harrison ford portrays indiana jones in this film as being someone who's probably like a I don't know, just like believes less in this sort of thing mm -hmm. probably doesn't care as much about so the impact that you know pillaging sort of historical artifacts does have um i think that's a good part of the that film. works really well yeah um and there's like there's good action scenes in here i mean like you've alluded to there's parts of this film that genuinely terrified me as a kid yeah i mean the fact that the bugs and stuff under the panko palace like kills me every time we get hearts getting ripped out of chest and like this is really dark but you know sort of one of the things i was talking about sort of in raiders how strong the supporting cast is mm -hmm. outside a short round you don't really have other supporting cast because you're not really buying willie as like someone who you really care about too much and you can't get quite frustrating yeah the uh, villain's not very compelling no and that's it like you've that's got it. you've got the people who are in the palace you've got the centipedes the the prince as well and the kids and yep. stuff like that and oh, yeah. the prince is annoying yeah the only other bit of this film i do like i do like the mine cart chase that's good fun as a miniature it's Same. pretty yeah. awesome like the practical effects like and they're going to be consistently good for these three 100 percent. like these films still like they're fun they look good mm -hmm. uh and they're action-packed and uh yeah nice all right here is where some people go back and forth on this, but I have I have firmly put Last Crusade in my second place. It's close, and I'm also in the same boat. Yes, it's fine. So this, this is literally sometimes to, like you know I've talked about like sometimes like oh it just depends on what day I want to feel. Do like. I want to watch Alien? Do I want to watch Alien? Literally, and I'm like, yeah. As much as I say like like because the the film we've talked about on the podcast today is the perfect film. Um, this Last Crusade sometimes it's just more fun. I don't know. I feel having more fun time. So we've done Last Crusade on the pod before. Yep. And I mean, it, it's incredible. I really, really love Last Crusade. It feels lighter than this one. Yep. Um, it's but a huge also just, shift after Temple. Just yeah. having uh, Sean Connery come <sighs> in as his dad. Like, what a stroke of genius. It's perfect. It's Henry Jones Jr. Um, and the relationship between Marcus and Sean Connery. 
when they like they're old friends and like the uh, Henry the pen is mightier than the sword. sword. Like just those dynamics are really good. The father son dynamic. It's great. It's so good. Um, when he goes into the castle and he uh, puts on his uh, his accent, uh, talking about the tapestries. If you are a Scottish lord, then I am Mickey Mouse. How dare he? Bang! And his noise. <laughs> the tapestries. It says something about the, the, the sniffles. Caught the snuffles. Watch out! This is really so loud. It's so good. Oh, uh, man. Um, but yeah, uh, like the, this yeah. one is incredible with its like clues as well. And like him tracking it down and following that. That, again, as I said, like the later films don't really do that as much. It and sort of, I yeah. love that. I love the mystery of it and following it around. Um, and again, I, I like the villains. Not nearly as compelling as the villains of Raiders. But... Donovan's okay, but I also like having, um, what's the female character? Elsa. Elsa. She is Elsa. so good. And I like that whole femme fatale kind of aspect of it as it well. It flips it on the head a little bit. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, I love a bit of noir. So, you do. Yeah, it just, it works really, really well. The characters are so lovable. The, uh, the lore behind what they're going for, having the actual holy grail there. It's like, yes, this is an artifact I recognize. And so even as a kid... I can attach to this yep. film a little bit more. I can feel like I, I get it and I understand the law behind it. Um, yeah, just, it's really good. It's really good. Like the, I think it's, um, all the set pieces are fantastic. I mean, we get the young River Phoenix, uh, rest in peace, who plays a young Indiana Jones, where we set up every part of his personality within about 20 minutes. Have you listened to this podcast? Uh, of Last Crusade. I go on a whole rant about how his entire life is set you, up. You've, I think we've talk, you've talked about it a couple of times. Yeah, I think uh, you've ranted about your rant. I have. Uh, I, have. I do that sometimes. You do, but like about the whip and the snakes and the scar and the hat and everything. Um, I really like the back end of this cold open when like the, the cut to him on the boat and stuff. I don't it know. belongs in a museum. So do you. And he gets, you know, battered by Colonel Sanders. Um, look alike. We don't really establish who this guy is. I know. No, but he's been wearing, wearing the same suit for like 30 years. I think he's literally like, yeah, the man in the Panama hat or something like that. Anyway, I'm trying to think of it. It's like basically every action set piece, um, you know, like trying to escape from the Zeppelin. The and tanks. The, uh, the, the tank chase is incredible. So good. And the fact that like Harrison Ford's like hanging on and doing all that stuff himself. Yeah. You get Sean Connery uh, yeah, on the beach, then trying to like, oh, how are they going to take down this Nazi plane? Chook, 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 chook. <laughs> Just to the umbrella. Uh, you, and you, have, kills him. you have forgotten the best part, though, when he gives the big spiel about how many different languages Marcus speaks. Oh. And then he cuts to, Does anybody speak <laughs> English? <laughs> Hello, can anybody help me? So, so Blend good. in, disappear. All righty, well. Wow. With, with any luck, Brody's already got the grail. <laughs> uh, and then, like, the end of the film, like, all the trials and stuff like Amazing. that. Amazing. So cool. And then one of my favorite parts of the film is when, like, they were riding back on horseback and they're like sort of working out what's going on. Marcus is like, I know the way, follow me. Follow me. Ah, he always falls off the horse. And I'm like, oh, Marcus is like my favorite Indiana Jones character. He's so good. I had, I had really wanted him and Sean Connery to make a return in a, in a later sequel, but it uh, was not meant to be. Um, so with this all being said, obviously in our number one position, we have Raiders of the Lost Ark. And you've heard us sing our praises for it today lots we we knew it was going to be a longer podcast we knew we wanted to do it in video format to to pay a very special homage to it this is one of my favorite movies of all time and has consistently been one of my favorite movies of all time like a lot of the films in my top ones on letterbox yep. are from more recent years okay but this one even as a kid i would list as like in my top three films so yeah it is a perfect film. I gave it a glowing review on uh, Letterbox last night, but also just watching it last night, smiling. Like my mouth hurt from smiling at it. And I kept stopping it and turning to Maddie. Cause she was playing video games and I was watching it on my laptop. I kept stopping it and turning it. This movie's so good. <laughs> oh, this person's just done this. Uh, uh, Marion's eating ever. food and she said, I bet you would. Uh, <laughs> so good, so good. <laughs> Like, super, super annoying uh, how much I was just uh, fanboying over it. But 
it's an incredible film and it, I love it. It really is. Uh, yeah, like like I talked about, like obviously there's, there's some sentimentality and nostalgia that plays a role, but also as well watching this film probably, you know, I, I really enjoyed like, I guess both eras of me enjoying this film as a kid, just amazed and wonderment at what I'm watching in terms of the adventure, the characters, the, the scary parts, the action and everything just sitting there, you know, like, looking up at the screen just being like, what am I watching? This is so fantastic. And then now, like, just appreciating the filmmaking in this movie and just how spectacular everything is on firing all cylinders, practical effects, the cinematography, uh, the performances, just little things. A perfect way to pay homage to one of our shared favourites. Yeah, absolutely. I, I adore it, and I was just super stoked that we could find that little loophole for the rating so that we could do it. Shout out to ClickView. <laughs> Uh, alrighty guys, well we will wrap things up there. As always, if you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up there, hit the old like button, um, comment. subscribe to the channel, comment. Uh, we're, we're back in video form for this one, but it's, uh, it's a brief stopover. We're, get, we're gonna go back to audio <laughs> as of next week. But if you do like the videos, please make sure you are super vocal about that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we don't know if you don't tell us and these are for you. So um, yeah, and, once- And for us too. Yeah, but once we <laughs> once we edit them, I'm not watching them back on loop. So. They're definitely then they that we are. I, from I us never to want to see them again. So um, yeah, please make sure you let us know if this is something that you'd be uh, keen to see more of in yep. the future. Absolutely. And um, yeah, we'll we'll log it away in the the big old warehouse full of podcasts that we've been uh, stacking up. Fortune and glory. That's it. Thanks, guys. Catch you at the next film club. <laughs>